adds to the excitement of the game, I think, Stan, because both of these coaches will be kind of like the, they can pull out all of their tools because this will be a great football game. It's going to be a measuring stick for both teams. Winston-Salem State to see how they compete for the CIAA title, and then MEAC crown is just luring around there for Hampton. This is going to be a good game. When you look at two running backs, Newkirk and Coley sounds like a law firm. There are Reeboks ones to watch tonight, and let's take a look first of all at a young man that goes by the name of Terry Newkirk. I really like Terry Newkirk. 1,000 yards rushing last season, already 41 carries and 201. He's a dynamic kid that'll lose rushers inside, outside, he's got some speed, doesn't mind going between the tackles and getting hit. Then you got the other side of the coin, you've got Montrell Coley. Coley, 800 yards rushing last season, already at 159. The thing that they like about him here at Hampton, Sam, is the fact that he can catch the ball out of the backfield, and when he gets the ball, he can do something, but he's a power runner also. So those will be a couple of the running backs, two outstanding quarterbacks and all across the board, some great athletes on both sides. Our four keys to the game tonight. Let's start with the Rams and Winston-Salem. Winston-Salem State's one of those teams that's got to do a few things. One, they can't give up big plays. A very quick football team in Hampton. Don't let them beat you. And play physical. Winston-Salem's offensive line goes about 300 pounds. They can hit you, and they don't mind doing that. Then you look at the Hampton Pirates. Wow, are they a dynamic football team. But they want to play and win the war in the trenches also. Pound, pound, pound. If you like great Round attack football. The night's going to be one of those nights. And in possession, Joe Taylor said we've got to keep the ball for about 33 minutes to be successful. If they do that, they feel they're going to have a good win. I just can't wait to see people pad popping and going after each other. Well, it's going to be a great night. These two teams have not played since 1992 when Hampton won that game. Winston-Salem's hoping to come in and make a little different look at it tonight. One of the guys that could turn it for Hampton tonight, however, is Octavius Cash. His boys could pay dividends tonight. CIAA football is brought to you by your local Ford dealer, proud corporate sponsor of CIAA football and the CIAA's family of colleges and universities. By Colgate Total Fresh Stripe Toothpaste, the brushing that works between brushings. By Food Lion, it's smart shopping made simple. By Budweiser, guaranteed fresh with our exclusive born on date, the day your Budweiser was made. And by Speed Stick Ultimate by Menon, kills odors, protects men. Well, we made mention of a beautiful night for football tonight. Again, partly cloudy, 69 degrees at kickoff. There is a brisk wind out of the north, blowing about 10 to 12 miles per hour, which could greatly affect uh, this football game tonight. Winston-Salem has won the toss of the coin, and they want that football first, which Hampton uh, Rhodes will be, uh, again, it'll be Hampton University kicking off as Joe Taylor and his fine pirate club coming in one and one will try to get it deep and keep it from getting to their fine return people, and there are some excellent ones on both sides. Winston-Salem, of course, will have Hines for one. Also back there will be Graham to return the football. Kermit Blunt on the other side from Winston-Salem. Kermit, of course, came in as a former Winston-Salem uh, Ram himself through for over 3,300 yards in an All-American season in his senior year and uh, is well-renowned. We talked to him about his quarterback, Woodbury. We said, is he as good as that guy that played there a few years ago? And he said, not quite. I'm still <laughs> the best. Kermit Blunt. He is a very confident man. His team is prepared and ready to play. And we'll find out here tonight as we get ready to kick the football game off. For Hampton Roads doing the kicking off honors will be Tellus Bolden. Bolden will be kicking deep. The deep men for Winston-Salem. Number 18 will be Wilkins on the goal line. And you'll see what he can do about returning this. Wilkins has had a good kickoff return of nearly 27 yards for a kickoff return. And Stan, I would say, getting the football first, Winston-Salem's going to try to send a message here early to Hampton Roads, which normally is an extremely good defensive club. Very good defensive team, but this Winston offense is one that's jumped out on people early. Let's see what they do in this kick. It'll come to the near sideline where Kelly... Well, Winston-Salem will try to take it wide. Avoids one tackler. Will cross the 20-yard line. Still on his feet out to around the 31. So a nice Stephen return Kelly from one side ball. of the football field to the other by Stephen Kelly. He is a junior from uh, Dorchester, South Carolina, and he's excited about it as the offense for Winston-Salem takes to the field. 
We watched this club play against Grambling in the Gold Coast Bowl of a year ago and, of course, going to win the Pioneer Bowl. And one of the guys instrumental in that was Tory Woodbury, their quarterback out of Winston-Salem Glen High School. Where's number 12? He was the MVP of the Pioneer Bowl. Excellent throw, but watch him on the option. He can run it at will. And take a look at that number. No interceptions. Only one last season. Doesn't make a lot of mistakes in the air. Fullback is Edge. The running back is Newkirk. And they give it to him. Run off the back. Rise the left side out beyond the 35 to the 36-yard line. This will be an interesting one because one of your keys, Stan, was win the battle in the trenches, and that's exactly where this game has got to be won or lost on either side of the football. I don't think anything's going to be cute early. You're just going to see inside football, try to get Newkirk on the edge. But I tell you what, Sam, if you like I said a moment ago, if you like power, pads against pads, this is the game to watch. We'll check our starting lineups brought to you by Ford after this play with a second down. And about five after the gain of five by Newkirk. Split receivers on the short side. They give it off to the first back through. That's going to be Edge. He'll gain two more. It's a third down, and they'll lead about three. Ford starting lineups tonight. You see Woodbury, Edge, and Newkirk in the backfield. Hines, Rigsby, and Wooten. They've got to get the ball to Hines. He's yet to have a good uh, game so far, but he's a big man. Andrews is their lone senior starting up front. That's Brian Andrews along with his younger brother, Sean, will anchor the center of that line on the offensive side of the ball for Winston. And a big third down play here early on as it's a third down and again three. Same set with the stack running backs. Woodbury checking off at the line of scrimmage. Runs the option, pitches to Newkirk. Turns the corner for first down and more. Out of bounds around midfield. Boy, good seal down blocks on that far side, both on the offensive side as Winston-Salem turned the corner. Defensively for the Pirates. They'll go with Scott. Michael Bland is everybody's All-American, including that of Street and Smith in the front line. And they will be the linebackers of Kaysen, Hughes, and Little, while the backers are all good ones as they'll turn on the corners. It is Moye will be on one side, Ben on the other. Coleman and Lewis will run the safety spots. So a good offensive drive here, Stan, for Winston-Salem has kind of sent a message to Hampton early on. First down, 10 yards to go at midfield. Woodbury, the second coach on the field here for Coach Kermit Blunt, has the option to wave off whatever's been sent in, and now he's in trouble, and he's dropped. A flag is down after a big rush is put on. Tremaine Hughes, number 40 out of Tallahassee, Florida, FAMU High School is the first man to reach him and drops him down for a big loss. They'll lose about eight yards on the play and there's a flag down. And it's going to be against Winston-Salem here. That play was ill-gotten at the very start, I believe, Stan. And it was bad, too. But again, Woodbury goes to the line of scrimmage with the option of checking off. Kermit told me yesterday that uh, at the South Carolina State game, 17 calls, he went up to the line, he checked off, he was right 16 and a half times. I don't know what that half was, but again, a very knowledgeable guy, not going to make a lot of errors. High little combination against the offense. 15-yard penalty, repeat first down. So the blocking high-low there combination uh, results in the penalty. And there you can see it right there. One blocking at the chest, the other undercutting the legs. And again, after the tackle is made, they step off, and it's going to be a first down and roughly a roadmap back to what they need to go to the 40-yard line down at Hampton for Winston-Salem. This ball they put in play roughly around their own 27-yard line. Woodbury hands it off to Edge. Edge just trying to work his way straight ahead. Make that Holloman, excuse me, number 20. John Holloman out of Kingston, uh, North Carolina. Has carried the ball only a dozen times, but keeps those legs churning. He'll gain about seven yards on the play. And Sam, it's interesting to watch Winston-Salem's attack. They're trying to go inside, try to get those big linemen, Brian Andrews, Sean Andrews, Jonathan Wilson, the guard in the center, try to open up some holes interior. Don't be surprised if you start to watch Winston-Salem establish that and then go to the option game. Chapman and Holloman both were in the eye a moment ago as Edge and Newkirk come back in. And with the second down play, Kermit Blunt, who calls all the offensive plays. He is the offensive coordinator, along as the head coach. The pitch, a late one to Newkirk. Tremendous.
tremendous running back, Newkirk, against South Carolina State early this year, 158 yards and five touchdowns. Not a bad <laughs> afternoon's work. Not Turned away there by Hampton, though, on a short game. Made that tackle. Greg Scott comes up on the corner. You see, we said that there's the inside and there's the pitch. If you don't read that, he can turn it up. A good block right there and a good job. But to get the coverage on, on Hampton to come inside, their linebackers are going to be tested tonight covering corners. Corey Kaysen, number 43, led the charge there. He's a 6'3", 220-pound uh, senior out of Virginia Beach Green Run Highway High School. Number 43 for Hampton leading the charge. Woodbury decoys the pass, just barely gets out of the outstretched arms of one defender. Still on the move. He gets back to the original line of scrimmage. He'll get some more up to the 45 and finally out to the 46. Ball is loose, but I think the ground caused the fumble. Hampton wants it called the other way. We'll see what the officials elect to call. And it's going to be Hampton has recovered to fumble. And they'll come out of it with it. And the man off the top of it is going to be Travis Coleman after Woodbury went down. Big pressure coming from straight on. And it's going to be Cornell coming from the outside on the pressure. You can see the play fake and then rushed out of the pocket. Great scrambling ability by Woodbury. They should have tucked that ball in and gone down. The ground calls that fumble, Sam. I think the ground calls that fumble. Nevertheless, Hampton's got the ball first and ten. Travis Coleman comes up with a loose football. And Hampton gets the attack going for the first time. So after a good possession there, that time by Winston-Salem, it stalls on the fumble at midfield. Hampton comes out with Octavius Cash. Only his third start as a Pirate, and he's going to air it out early. He's falling down deep, and it's going to be caught. Touchdown, Compton. Defensive back Hargroves was right there, but Compton literally reached out and snatched it away. A 50-yard bomb, make it 51 officially, and Hampton Rhodes goes in the lead one to nothing. On the first touchdown as they lead 6-0. Wow. What a grab that was by Compton. Well, you get these two guys locked in one-on-one. -on -one. After turnovers, you try to go for big plays. He's got too much time to throw it, gets hit after it. That ball just stays up there. I don't think Hargrove saw it. A great job by Compton to uh, come back and catch the ball. Touchdown. Give him six for Hampton. Compton's second touchdown of the year will be followed by Paul Pavlik's extra point. And with a clock stopped at 11.07 here in the opening period. Hampton from the Miac has taken a 7-0 lead on Winston-Salem with a CIAA. This 20th meeting between Hampton and Winston-Salem here at Hampton, uh, Virginia, has turned out to be a one-man wrecking crew in cash in his first pass of the night. And Stan Litter, it's a great catch by Compton for the score. Well, he came back to receive the pass. Had he not done that, it should have been intercepted. And I'll tell you what, I don't know if Hargrove just lost sight of it, but it's a good reception and a good pass. There was pressure on, but not enough. And that's just the way you start. We talked about it in the opening. Winston-Salem had to avoid big plays. First time Hampton gets the ball. Touchdown. One play, 51-yard drive. Took something like 11 seconds to get that done. And Kelly will return this kick again. There's a flag down as Kelly spins away from one, two, three, four tacklers. And Molly is thrown out of bounds, but there's a flag thrown back up and around the 40-yard line. You see that only nine seconds officially. And a 51-yard toss. Cash, who, by the way, has thrown for now his third touchdown as a starting quarterback for Hampton. And the Pirates are on the board early. Flag is being discussed here again. A holding call will go against Winston-Salem and kind of backed themselves into a real problem when Woodbury was dropped for a loss. They had the additional penalty of a high-low block, and now they get a holding on the kickoff here, Stan. Yeah, they got 57 returning players on this Winston team, so they're very mature. They've been in this situation against South Carolina State. They were behind early, came back, and blew South Carolina away. Something you got to interest. It's a receiving team during the return, 10-yard penalty, first down. So the penalty call against Winston-Salem will put them all the way back on their own 15-yard line. That excellent pos field position, their first one, but a fumble by Woodbury at midfield. Set up the first offensive 
possession for Hampton resulted in a score. Sam, two things on that drive. I saw the ability of Winston-Salem State to run the football. That was the first turnover of the season for this Ram football team. How are they going to react now? See, all season, only a dozen penalties called on Winston-Salem. They got two big ones. 33 yards total going. Newkirk, he is drilled as he reaches the line of scrimmage by the aforementioned Michael Bland, all MEAC performer, came in with only six tackles, mostly because he's double and triple teamed. They keep away, but number 96 was not to be denied there. And all kinds of pros are looking at him, Stan. Oh, yeah, Michael Bland's the epitome of a student athlete. He's already graduated, he's now in grad school, defeats the block, and comes one-on-one, -on -one and Mr. Bland meet Mr. Newkirk. I love that story on Bland and the fact that he always goes to tutoring class, and they say, you know, he's a grad student. He said, no, 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 he tutors in English, <laughs> people. <laughs> 6'4", 295. He's our U.S. Army student athlete. You can see 3.10 in English arts. Congratulations from the U.S. Army being all it can be on the field and off to Michael Bland. We've got a timeout call. Early part of this first period tonight from Hampton on a delightful night for college football. 10-17 left to go before the end of the first period. And it's already the Hampton Pirates with the lead with a score of 7 nothing. We'll return in just a moment. Well, here at the Armstrong Stadium, built way back in 1928, as a matter of fact, the students of Hampton University did all of the work here to build the stadium that originally had a seating capacity of 1,500. It's mushroomed to 14,000 under the leadership of Dr. William Harvey, who will meet at halftime. And his club, Hampton University, leads 7 to nothing. Winston on the attack, and there's no place to run as Curnell. Harry Curnell from Charleston, South Carolina. Burke High School put all 265 pounds hurting on New Kirk for a loss of three yards in the play. You know, I talked a moment ago about I thought that uh, Winston could run the football. Cornell's got different ideas. Again, they're trying to go one-on-one -on -one blocking. Cornell's just defeating the blocks. Not a good job that time by Wilson Andrews, and Andrews gets there and makes a big hit. Across that front line, he mentioned Andrews Bryan, the only senior on the starting lineup. On the front line, the left guard, number 70, his younger brother, Sean, is the center, number 66, out of Lake Waccabaw High School in North Carolina. Third down, 13 yards out of the shotgun, Woodbury. Flushed out of there and running. Turns the corner, looks for a block. He'll get upfield around the 30-yard line. May have stepped out of bounds a little earlier than that. He does it around the 25, but there is a hanky down across the field. Boy, I tell you what, you talk about a guy that was motoring, number 99, Gregory Scott, 6'5", 250, was in hot pursuit, number 99 of Woodbury. Yeah, and I'll tell you something else. If I'm Kermit Blunt, I don't like to see my quarterback running that much, and especially where he's carrying the football. He had the first down a moment ago, caused a fumble. Hampton goes down and scores. This time, he, I think they may have had the first down, but it looks like the flag, I can't really tell, may have been against Winston-Salem State. Chuck Williams in the white hat is our referee for tonight's game. He'll be our third broadcast partner with us tonight. You'll hear him throughout the night. Unfortunately, Kermit Blunt's getting tired of hearing him. <laughs> As this is another penalty appears against Winston-Salem, but we're not sure. Let's wait and see what Mr. Williams has to say. Wait, wait, wait. The play stands fourth down. So again, it was just picking up. And again, the big pressure put on Woodbury, and he cannot afford to have this all night long. Well, you can see the pressure's coming. He's got to roll out of there. Does a great job of eluding the first defender. But then, yet, see, Torrey, you got to tuck the football in. Keeps it out there too far and make it hit. And again, just short of the first down. I think he's going to be about two yards short. So this brings up a fourth down play, and they played a little cat and mouse game there as Winston-Salem didn't run their punt team out until just at the last moment. And Chris Dinkins will get ready to kick it away. Standing back deep for Hampton will be number five, and that's going to be Travis Coleman will be back deep to receive. The snap is off, and they may have run down the clock. And let's correct. It's going to be Willie Bennett, number one, is back there for Hampton. Snap. Delay a game. Off Delay a game. So oh, Dinkins no is going to have to survive another extra five yards here, giving Bennett a chance to catch this ball for Hampton inside about the midfield stripe here. There is a win at the back, however, of Dinkins, and he has as much as a, uh, I believe, a 46-yarder early this year against uh, South Carolina State. Bennett's an explosive runner, averaging about 15 on punt returns. That may have been partially blocked on its way out of there. It's fielded short. 
And Hampton will have great field position there as Moudie. Rashad Moudie out of College Park in Georgia. A senior catches it on the short kick that time that may have been blocked on the way out. And a good pressure put on the uh, kick of that time. Dinkins by Hampton. Pirates ball. So Hampton takes over a second time tonight. It'll be at the 32-yard line. We talked about avoiding big plays, the second big play of the football game. Couldn't quite see who that was. It came in there. Dickens took a little too long to get that off. First down for Hampton in great field position at the 32, Sam. They try to find some running room with Montrell Coley. You know, we looked at him yesterday. And I don't mean to be offensive, but he is truly the epitome of a fire plug. Yeah. I mean, he just... We bumped into say, how you doing, kid? Walking in. That's, that's Coley. Oh, okay. Is that what that bruise is? I wonder <laughs> yeah. about that. Montrell Coley from Goldsboro, North Carolina. He came in rushing for 159 yards so far this year, but gained uh, nearly uh, eight, 900 yards a year ago. And he's in the eye right now with a quarterback, Cash, who threw for the early touchdown. Compton gives off to Coley. Montrell still on his feet into the secondary, down to the 30-yard line. Let's check Montreal Hampton Coley. University's forward starting lineups. Cash, Coley, and a guard running at fullback, Clement. Compton, Smith, and Blunt, a transfer out of U of VA, is at the tight end. Forbes, Steiner, Fields, Vaughn, who calls the plays on the front line offensively for them, and McCall. If they're going to run, Stan, we understand that right side behind Vaughn and McCall will be mostly the play they run, and you saw them go right at that string right there. That side has the most experience in this Hampton line. Fields, Vaughn, McCall, 235, 300, 305 pounds. I'd run behind them, too. Defensive line digging in. Third down play, they're throwing near side. They bring it out to Smith. Zarell Smith out of Mechanicsville, Virginia, makes the catch. He is one of their top and big play receivers. Defensively for Winston-Salem on our forward starting lineups. Down on the front line, Mackey, Moore, Wesley, Williams, and Brown. Good to defensive end rush. Their linebackers will be Brian and Oaks. Oaks is starting tonight for Damon Workman, whose mother passed away and is not here tonight. We send our regrets. You see the secondary, already Hargraves have been stung for a touchdown tonight. And again, our condolences going to Damon Workman, a young man out of Fayetteville. Mother passed away and is not here tonight for Winston on a fourth down play. They're going for it. They've got an opening of Coley. Coley tripped up before he reaches the 20, but it looks like it'll be enough for a first down. However, now they're backing it up a bit. And it'll depend on what kind of a spot they're going to get out of this. They may bring the change for this one. You can see the power of Coley, Sam. Balls is blocking very well. He's only 5'10". You can see that. There's Coley getting hit by Kelly. Kelly meets him on. I don't know where his knee touches, but I think he got just enough for the first down. But look at this. Look at the power when these two guys hit each other. Stephen Kelly, 6'2", 205. Boom. And he still drags him for another two yards. First down, Hampton. Stan, I love that comment by Joe Taylor when we talked to him. He said, hey, if you see Coley running, look for 66 to be ahead of him. And that time, Vaughn did pull and led in that hole for the gain of the first down. And Coley limps off here. So Coley's coming to the sideline for Hampton, limping off, as he's going to be substituted now by Travis Hales, who he is the heir apparent as their tailback and maybe one of the quickest guys on the field for Hampton University. Okay, this got really good speed. You can get, make the players around the corner very hungry, but knows that he may have to wait one season because he's behind a great running back in Coley. Clement on the right. Now they flank Hales out to the left side. Swing the tight end blunt over the right side and taking Compton in motion. Handoff comes to Clement. Clement powers his way. Look at him turn those legs down near the 15-yard line. As Clement, six feet, 260 pounder, has not rushed for 100 yards so far this year collectively. But the Detroit, Michigan young man really tried to look for some extra yardage there. And we talked about that offensive line of Hampton getting out and making the plays. That's Fours making a block. There's another block by Smith, the wide receiver. And all you've got to do if you're Hampton is just run the football and be powered. Norman Clement, six feet, 260, a converted lineman. And I think you can say that tackle was made by committee of Winston-Salem. <laughs> Second down, four yards to go for the Pirates, leading 7-0. 547 to go for period. The handoff again. This time to Coley, who has checked back in. He stutters ahead for maybe a yard. 
It very, is down at the 15 now. I'm sorry, be very important for Winston Salem State to stop them. The whole Hamptons just a field goal. They've had two possessions and they've had turnovers on both of them. They've got to get something positive. This is a big stand for the Rams. So Coley out for one play is back in. You see he Compton on the make that Clements on the right. Compton 83 was there with him. He flanks out to the near left side. Blunt number 87 is the tight end on the left. Uh, he split Smith out to the far right side and split the running backs. Compton in motion. He caught the touchdown pass earlier. Hand off. Coley to the 10. And Vaughn, number 66, leading the charge again as they have enough for another first down. And this is just in your face, grinded out football, Stan. We talked about that as well the power attack of both schools. They're going to put the ball in the air some, but basically, this is just man on man, find a hole and someone take it. Winston Salem State, that's Calvin Bryant, not doing a good job. There's a big guard. Look at those guys pull. Big number 66, Larry Vaughn, leading the way. And Coley finds a spot and gets the first down. I guess I shouldn't ignore, of course, uh, Eric Stein along with Michael Forbes, the two left side guys that did their job with Vaughn right on their hip. First down, 10 yards to go. Just outside the 10-yard line. And Clement gets the ball to the 5 to the goal line. Touchdown, Hampton Road. And Hampton University comes up with a second touchdown. This one on the ground as Clement scores and Hampton takes now a 13-0 lead. Boy, he looked like he was just trying to knife his way through the uh, cafeteria line that time. <laughs> he, could, he couldn't get in the end zone fast enough. Look at this big hole. Bam! He breaks off one tackler. Those guys pushing, getting out of the way. Get out of my way. I'm trying to get in the end zone. Fields, touchdown, Hampton. Calvin Bryant, number 44, the left inside linebacker for Winston-Salem as the extra point is blocked it in the end zone. So if there is little hope for Winston-Salem at this point, they block the extra point try after Clement runs it in for the score. And with the clock stopped at 426 in the first period, it's a 13-0 score for Hampton. The University trying to improve their one and one record off to a quick 13 to nothing lead over undefeated Winston Salem State. Bolden will be kicking off here for Hampton University. Again, Wilkins is the deep man, but it's not going to get back to him. He comes in and steals it away. That's Wilkins, and he is dead as he gets across the 25 yard line and hit hard at the 27. Well, it was just the executed play with a huge hole and Clement took advantage of it on the TD. Sam, look at that hole. Look at the blocking by the interior. Steiner and Larry Vaughn just making it. It's easy. You and I could have run through that hole as big as it was. It's a great job by the offensive line. And Winston-Salem, the defense not accustomed to having points scored on, blown away. They've got to regroup and they've got to do it early and quickly. Speak for yourself, oh, overconfident one. <laughs> First and ten for Winston-Salem. They need an offensive charge right now to try to get themselves back in this game. Wooder hands it off. First back through. And Newkirk will gain it out over the line of scrimmage for about three. Win in the trenches. That was where Joe Taylor said his club had to win. And right now his defensive line is really not only putting pressure on Woodbury, but not letting Newkirk or others have much in the middle. They've had success getting it outside, but even the corners have done a good job of turning everything back to the strength. They're doing a very good job, as you said, Sam, of keeping them contained inside the box, which is a pile, and players are making plays. Woodbury in the shotgun, Newkirk to his left. Woodbury under pressure to the near sideline. He's got a receiver, and Shepard will take it out beyond the 40-yard line to the 41. I want to tell you, you talk about an acting job by Woodbury. It's kind of like, oh, there comes a couple of guys. I'll just kind of stand here for a minute. Then accelerated to throw that ball on a string to Shepard. Fine athlete in Torrey Woodbury. Holds the ball, holds the ball, looking, looking, being patient. He's not going to make a lot of mistakes, but he's got to get rid of it quick and puts a dart right in there to Ollie Shepard. Shepard out of Williamston, North Carolina. Came in with only a couple of catches for 31 yards, but... He's had good uh, yardage as far as the average is concerned. 16 on the average. Didn't quite get it that time, but he does get Winston Salem a first down at their own 39-yard line. Third possession of the night for Winston Salem here in the half. Woodbury in trouble again. Athleticism gets him out of the pocket and heading to midfield. Covers up the football a little better this time and just shy of a first down as he gains nearly nine yards. And 
What a quality on both sides. Cash for Hampton. And, of course, Woodbury for Winston-Salem to get flushed out of the pocket at that kind of speed to make something happen. Woodbury's making smart decisions. I'd like to see him get to the sideline. I know Curry would, too. Don't want to see him run the football. But, again, you got to protect the football. Puts you in a good situation there in a second down and maybe one or two. But, again, if Woodbury is having to run the football, that means there's a lot of pressure being put on by the Hampton defense. Woodbury, career, has rushed for over 700 yards and eight touchdowns. Has thrown for 26 TDs in his career. Newkirk will get the first down and more to the 45. And now Winston-Salem mounting an attack here, which has to be the delight of their head coach across the front blunt as Hampton tries to regroup their defense. Sam, traditionally, Winston-Salem has been a very fast starting team of the two games they played this year. They've outscored their opponents 20 to 7. Conversely, Hampton 9 to 3. So Joe Taylor's got to be happy about the game the way it's been dictated right now. Hampton had actually expected maybe a pass off of that because both Parker and Brown were in as the defenders and they took the two linebackers huge and casing out but now they're back in there and off again to newkirk and newkirk's left side of his line is doing an excellent job drayton powell brian andrews the center sean andrews open up some good holes and newkirk with an outstanding balance of his carrying it very well thousand yard rusher of a year ago 1046 and already got 158 against South Carolina State earlier this year. Also is coming in here and starting the season as the number five rusher in all of Winston-Salem State history. But he's got a lot of running. He'd have to run from Hampton back to Winston-Salem to catch Richard Hundley with over 6,000 yards. Richard Hundley, one of the great ones to come out of Winston. Woodbury over the middle. That one almost got it nose down before it ever got out of there. And Wooten, the tight end, never had a chance to get it. A lot of time a little over exuberance to try to get that ball out of there and all of a sudden you'll see that nose just kind of tip down and never got any kind of flight to Wooten. And you got to keep in mind that Woodbury is a big kid. He goes about 6'3", 215, 210, and he can throw the football, but against his Hampton guys, these linemen have got big hands, they've got long reach, and it makes it hard to throw, but that time, as you said, maybe a little too happy throws the nose down and puts up a third down situation. Scott, Bland, Dawson, and Cornell up on the front line for Hampton. There was Big Bland digging in as a snap on the shotgun and they screen it to the far side there'll be no place to run as the corners chose it down in a hurry and it's going to be a short game by Winston, and this will bring up a fourth down and kick time. And wow, did you see how Corey Kaysen closed on that play? The, the linebacker from the outside comes up and reads screen. He's got a home that responsibility, comes up and makes the play, and actually Winston-Salem loses a yard or two on the play. Kaysen was their number three tackler all of last year with 53, also had three sacks. Comes in with 11 tackles and none bigger than that one now with a kick time. And Dinkins, who had his last one blocked, kick for Winston. He gets that out of there. It'll drive Bennett all the way back to his own five-yard line. Bennett skips over one tackle and finally gets it out to the 14, but there's a flag behind the play. And we'll see who it's going to go against. Indication it could be a holding there after the punt. And a good one that time by Dinkins after he got that one out of there. And a fairly decent run back that time by Bennett, but it'll flag down. Stan, both coaches talked about playing very physical football, but both coaches also said they knew they were going to have to go probably a little deeper than they have in the first two games. The cooler weather tonight certainly is going to help that. They may not have to go as deep as maybe they thought they might. Well, I think that this is a perfect night for football. We've said it several times. I think they'll both play a lot of players because that's part of their systems. The ways in the back against the receiving team during the return, first down. So Chuck Williams giving us our call, and you're going to see this block, I believe, 57 right there, blocking right in behind, and uh, that uh, penalty is going to be going on Joseph Johnson, a freshman, making a mistake as Bennett was making the run, and it backs it all the way up to the five-yard line. It'll be first down and 10 to go for Hampton. And now field position becomes a little better ally of Winston-Salem. Still trailing, though, 13-0. They try to edge it over the left side. Good contact in the backfield that time. First man coming up was Robert Mackey out of Fort Mill, South Carolina, number 51, that turned the play into his strength. And the down lineman in the middle, along with Calvin Bryant, number 44, the middle linebacker, making the stop. 
Ball moves it out to the 10, but before the play can go, that's going to do it. And that's our first period. So tonight, Hampton University hoping to get a victory here over Winston-Salem in the interconference battle between the CIAA and the MEAC. And started off quickly with a touchdown pass and a run for a 13-0 lead. 13 to nothing, Hampton University, the Pirates leading the Rams here after the opening period of tonight's game. And uh, you see the numbers so far here, Stan. Hampton with 84 total yards, 80 for Winston-Salem, but nothing to show on the scoreboard clock. Yeah, and that big number down there is that one turnover. But actually, you count that block punt as two, and that's really much turned this football game around Hampton's way. So after a gain out to around the five-and-a-half-yard line, only a half a yard gain, it's second down, virtually the same 10 for Hampton. Cash back to throw. Under pressure, fleshed out. Now does not put off. Knocked up in the air, and Smith almost had a chance to come up with that one on the second bounce. Well, just before we started the second period, had a couple of youngsters out as they were passing for Denson's. All brought to you by Men and Speed Stick. And it was uh, Bryant Umstead throwing for 35 yards off the goal line as our winner. So our congratulations to Brian Umstead. Yeah, he's all smiles after he gets the victory in the men in speed stick passing for distance contest. Third down, saved 10 yards to go for Hampton now off of their own five-yard line. They stack the running backs of Clement, the fullback. Montrell fully the tailback. Cash is back to throw. Compton is receiver. He's got it inside us. He's still on his feet. Still trying to make some running room and is finally drilled and knocked down by Mackey. Boy, Stan with Winston Salem playing the zone. Compton did a great job of just kind of turning that one in right inside the deep receiver, the deep uh, secondary, made a good catch. Of. They did a really good job of reading that. That was another one of those situations where Avery went to the line of scrimmage and checked with me. Compton does a little slant right in between the zones, between the linebackers, catches it and makes a big play. It almost broke that, Sam. Compton averaging nearly 14 yards per catch coming in, and he's right on average tonight. Yeah, you can see right there, backers in between the backers and the cornerbacks. One, two, three guys he bounces off of. He turns his shoulders. He may can go for a long way. Number 34, Eric Richburg, unable to make the stop originally. Montrell Coley diving ahead for maybe a yard. Down Lyman all over the top of that one, led by Richard Cheek. Out of Lumberton, North Carolina, number 93, a senior playing at nose guard. Was the first man that got a hand on him. Gain of only a yard, second down. And right now, Winston-Salem has done a reasonably good job of controlling Mr. Coley, but it's been the passing arm of Cash that's really hurt him. Yeah, and that was a third down situation a moment ago. Third and the 10, and they get out of it. These are the things that you want to get the defense off the field if you're Winston-Salem. You want to get this offense going. But again, big plays for Hampton. Keeps this drive alive. Morant now the fullback. Hales is the tailback. Cash is running, literally from his life. Gets away from one tackler and finally steps out of bounds. He will gain maybe about a yard, but that's all just inside his own. Well, they'll back it up to the original line of scrimmage. No gain. It's third down. It's still about nine to go. Sam, you can see the strength of Cash. 6'3", 195. Gets out of there. Corey Williams coming down, breathing down his back. He's take one time right there and just breaks that tackle. And smart thing to do, get out of bounds. You live to see another day. By the way, number 95, as you mentioned, Corey Williams, 6'1", 260. And you can see his quickness as he was running from the offside and almost overtook Cash. Who's pulling again? Comes to the near side, and that one is going to be in and out of the intended hand of the receiver. Trying to come up with a reception there is Christopher Parker, but couldn't hang on to it as he got himself strung around in its fourth down and kick time for Hampton. 13 20 to go. Second period now, as it is Hampton with the lead 13 to nothing. By the way, the halftime tonight will meet and greet Dr. William Harvey, the president of Hampton University, and Dr. Harold Martin Sr., the chancellor, the new chancellor, I might add, at Winston-Salem, the gentlemen that run their two fine universities. Kick time for Hampton. Bolden will power one there. Hines will make a fair catch of it. And he'll get it right at around his own 39-yard line. So the first time tonight that Hampton, Hampton has had to punt the ball away, and they do. Field position up to 39 for Winston-Salem. They've got some work cut out as they trail by 13. 
Sports. With the temperatures in the 60s here in Hampton, Virginia, a great night for college football. There are some still shirt sleeve folks that are enjoying it. As again, we've got a lot of the students, the alumni, and uh, like it, take a kid to the game night here tonight at Hampton University. And the Pirates have a 13-0 lead, 13-11 to go before halftime. Newkirk for Winston Salem, who's gained now 32 yards as he barges it out to around the 41-yard line before he takes a smack and is thrown back. Good shot that time by Robert Mackey out of Fort Mills, South Carolina. He, by the way, wants to own his own trucking company. I don't see any reason why he shouldn't. As big as he is, you're going to tell him you can't? He can't? <laughs> I sure am glad it is take a kid to the game night and you let me come along. Isn't it nice? I'm telling you. Been having a, I've had a great time today. Thanks for taking off that silly T-shirt, too. That's man. it. <laughs> Second down, eight yards to go for Winston-Salem. They're at their own 41-yard line, trailing by a couple of touchdowns. Little delay, giving it off to Newkirk. He's trying to make something out of nothing and does. Fumble! It's on the ground, and I think the ground did cause that one after he gained it out to around the 43-yard line. So a lot of running laterally, but very little upfield that time, going towards the north end zone here for Winston-Salem's Newkirk. And it brings up a third down play. Hampton was very confident that they could go ahead and cover well with their linebackers, even though they said we'll see the nickel backs. But they're staying with the linebackers right now, anticipating maybe a pass by Woodbury. Well, you get Hampton feels like one of the best thing they do with the defensive backs they cover. They've got great linemen put pressure on. This is an important series for Winston-Salem State. Woodbury throwing. Oh, great catch it in and out of the hands of Rigsby. Boy, Sherman Rigsby thought he had had that catch. He had his nails on it. And the young man out of Chapel Hill, North Carolina, just almost came up with a sensational catch. But almost does not count. You see Woodbury saying, hey, good job, though. Thanks for almost bailing me out. Oh, that's a nice pass. Three-step drop. The ball's right on the money. There was Lewis coming up to cover that one-on-one -on -one against Lewis. You don't want to do that. Lewis had three interceptions in the Heritage Bowl last year. The ball just outstretched hands of Sherman Rigsby. Dinkins will once again kick. Couple of kicks already tonight. He's been averaging just a shade under 40 yards per kick for the year. Gets a slow, and that one might have also been tapped as Bennett chases it down and will tumble out of bounds with it inside the 30 around the 28-yard line. So Dinkins, who has had to punt the last two times, you may recall the first time Winston had the ball, they fumbled it away at midfield. So their offense has sputtered and yet to get going. After getting the ball on their own five-yard line for Hampton earlier, having to punt it away, their field position moves up to the 28-yard line. So just an exchange of punts, the field position helped them. And you saw it right there of Joe Taylor and earlier of Kermit Blunt, two of the classiest coaches you'll find. Both of them have won championships. They believe in graduating players, making sure things go the right way. And that's why they've both been so successful. And their universities are giving them longevity as well. Nine years for Joe Taylor, eight years now by Kermit Blunt. Letting them build their programs from within. Good fake by Cash. He's got Smith rolling up the near side. He's going to keep it, though. Behind one blocker, there's a flag down. As Cash, Octavius Cash, carries his out beyond the 40. Boy, Smith was on a fly pattern up the near sideline, but Cash could never find a place to come to a screeching halt and throw. And a flag is down behind the play. Where his flag was dropped, it's probably going to be a hold against Hampton. Oh, yes, so oh, eagle eyes. You got it 11 19 to go in the second period. Hampton again getting a touchdown pass from Cash to Compton in the first period. Then they followed it up with an 11 yard run by Clement. The extra point was blocked, and it's 13 0 Hampton University. There's the numbers on Cash so far. 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. So it'll bring up a first down and two yards needed here by Hampton University. They're waiting for the down marker to get moved officially downfield before they get this underway. Sam, you know, we were just talking about Joe Taylor and, and Kermit Blunt. Both of these guys are fast approaching the all-time wins at both of their schools. Joe's, Joe's number two on the list with 71 wins coming into the day. Kermit's number number three, and he's tied with Pete Richardson at 41 wins each. So, but the guys have been there. They're winning, graduating players, as we said a moment ago, class acts. 
McDermott Blunt and Winston-Salem in their first CIAA championship under Blunt, their fifth overall as a school. Hampton, once a member of the CIAA, now in the MEAC, dumped it to the far side to Coley. And there's going to be no place to run on that one. I can tell you how well Winston-Salem played that, and in particular their down lineman. How many times, Stan, have you looked at the down lineman kind of taking the fate and the bait and then not being able to recover and get cross field to oh, make yeah, the stop? Oh, yeah, great job on the naked screen. You go one way and you look away and you hope influence comes that way. But you see there's a good job by Calvin Bryant standing in his pursuit area, coming up and making the play. I like this. There's the fake one way. You look right. Everybody goes to the right. You step up. Good footwork by Avery. Gets the pass there. to the pursuit of the Winston-Salem State Rams. Bryant out of one of my favorite high schools, Goose Creek, South Carolina. Been there. Been yeah. there. And done that, right? <laughs> Stop at the action now as Hampton wants to take a timeout. They had to take a timeout because the uh, play clock had wound down too tightly for Kays to do anything with it. So Hampton right now up in sputtering. They've got a 13-0 lead. Hey. First half of CIAA football featuring Kermit Blunt brought to you by Ford tonight from Hampton. Joe Taylor is countered by the other side for Hampton. And his club now facing a second down and roughly about 19 yards for a first down. Cash back to throw. Big pressure. He gets out of it. There's a flag behind the play. And Cash finally dumps it to the far sideline. There's a holding play, I'm sure, behind that play. As Cash in the grips of the Winston-Salem defenders just threw it out of bounds. Well, I tell you what, Winston-Salem now starting to find that they're able to kind of stick their ears back and head in there. Well, they felt all along that they could match up in certain spots against them. Yeah, well, Holding call against Hampton. Now, this is an interesting situation. Obviously, you would like to march him back, but you're going to bring up a third down and roughly about... 22 yards anyway. I, I decline this penalty. I would. You can see where the hold is right there. The push in the back right there by one of the Hampton de uh, defensive backs. I mean, offensive backs, I'm sorry. Uh, Travis Hales. By the way, that was uh, Bryant again that was in there and making things uh, a little tough on Mr. Octavius Cash. Take a good look at Joe Taylor. Joe, three-time CIAA champion, has won two MEAC championships. He's standard Hampton. Holding is a call, and they are going to take the yardage, so they will take it back inside to the eight-yard line. Brings up the second down. Keep in mind, they must get all the way out to the 39-yard line. They're up 39 for a first down here for Hampton. Second and a long 30 yards, but this would scare me if I'm Kermit Blunt. The wide outs for Hampton are very fast, 4-4, four, 4-5. Four, four, you don't want to get a situation where you blitz, you get locked in man coverage, and they beat you on a big play, Sam. Two of those speedsters, Hampton to the far side and Smith to the near side. Split running backs, Coley back there along with Plymouth. In the end zone, Cash. Looking to throw it to the near side to Coley out of the backfield. And he's going to take it out of bounds just shy of a first down. And as that time, it was Montrell Coley coming out of the backfield. And what a nice, soft touch from Cash to put that one right. The outstretched hands that time of Coley. Sam, we just talked about it. What they do, they send two guys deep. Harris goes, Smith goes on the deep flat, and they throw underneath. And look how soft it passes to Coley. We told you Coley was a good receiver. He caught 10 passes last year for it, and also for a touchdown. A good pass, a good play, a great call by the Hampton staff. Kelly ended up making the stop. You could see the linebacker, Bryant, was in coverage but couldn't handle it. Third down and one. Coley with a call. First down, Hampton. And there's a flag down, a little unsportsmanlike conduct as they were battling well behind the line of scrimmage. And they're going to win it in the trenches with not only physical play, but now they're starting to talk a little trash back there as well. What I wonder if this is behind the line of scrimmage after the play, where does, where does this point of a, a foul take place? Could be a first down for Hampton and they mark it off, or it could be a third and a long situation again. I think it goes to the first down and then the step off, to be honest with you. Because I believe the play was whistled down and then the flag was thrown. Our viewers were not afforded the opportunity to see when the flag came down, but uh, that time Coley, who had gained the first down, was already down. And the play was stopped because they have to move the chain, stopping it at 9.07, but 
That is subjection on our part. We'll wait for Mr. Williams and company. Well, the flag flying on the 38, and the ball is going to be would have been in play on the 44-yard line. So I just wonder if that flag is near where the point of that curve. It is a holding rather than an unsportsmanlike. So that'll make it a whole different uh, can of worms here. And they'll wait to make the official decision here. Chuck Williams checking with uh, the umpire, Johnny Forte. And it'll be a big step off here going against Hampton all the way back to around the 28-yard line. So the holding call on Hampton. Brings it down. Well, they indicated a hole. Now they call a personal foul. Yeah, dead ball personal foul okay. uh, at mark from the point. So I think now we're trying to decide it's what down it should be. And I really think it may be first down, Sam. Kermit Blunt is also in awe of what has happened here. Yeah, I think this first is going to be first down and then mark it off from the point of the, uh, the infraction. He saw the, the referee in that case indicate a holding. And in fact, it was a personal foul, which is a different set of circumstances here, but it does bring up still a first down play and a ball at the 28 yard line. And now there is a yellow flag thrown again and some contact on the right side. You see the penalties mounting up on both sides. Nearing 100 penalty minutes, or penalty uh, yards so far on both clubs. And again, motion going to be called against Hampton. What's the one thing when you're going in on the road or you're playing a team that you are expected to beat? On the road for Winston, expected to beat for Hampton, little jitters. All of a sudden, Winston now starting to show that they're going to start playing a little more here with Hampton. Hampton starts getting a little edgy on saying, hey, we got to make something happen here. Well, it's a slap in the mouth factor. You know, Winston came out and got slapped in the mouth early, and now they've got to recover and play football. They've got to sit up pin their ears back. That third down situation only, though, they can't be happy about that. Compton in motion for Hampton. Cash back to throw. He's throwing for broke. He's got Smith out there. He's got it. He fumbles it away, but no, he dropped it. Smith had that one, was turning up field behind Hargroves and dropped the football all the way up field at the 35. Sam, they're picking on Eric Hargrove. Again, we just told you about Smith's deep route ability. He's on the track team, runs a 4-3. If this football's got a little more oomph on it, instead of landing up there like that, you can count six points for Hampton University. But fortunately, the ball's a little late for him. And Hargrove does a great job of reaching back in there and stripping of it. Yeah, that's an incomplete. That's a good call by the officials. But a little more air to that football, you're going six. Just, I could have that. just a great effort by Hargroves. You're right. Just enough of a bump <laughs> to take the concentration off of Smith. There ain't no way you're going to catch that ball. Right? Caught his no. in there, and I see a touchdown, too. <laughs> now you see Joe Taylor. He's not happy with what's going on with his second down play, and he's going to take a timeout. The play clock was down to zero. I don't think they ever reset it correctly. At least it wasn't an indication it was. I think that's what he spotted here. And they're going to take a timeout. So a timeout on the field. The defense of Winston-Salem trying to dig in. And for a conference battle, the MEAC against the CIAA tonight from Hampton. Like the power of a wish. Hampton won last week 26-24 against Howard in the Urban City League game up in New York. While Winston-Salem was running all over Bowie State 40-6. Tonight Hampton enjoying a 13-0 lead here. 8-14 left to go before halftime from Hampton. A second down and 15 to go. Handoff on the inside and running room to the outside to Morant. Carlton Moran out right here in Hampton and rushed only five times for 15 yards. Gets a nice here. Out over the 30. They'll spot him down to around the 33. First carry tonight. He's got a lot of speed. Can get to the outside again. Winston Sam doing a good job of putting pressure on their guys, but he broke contain and gets out to the corner. You don't want to let a player like Morant make a big play. Both linebackers that time. Number 44, Bryant. Number 11, Oaks. Had a shot at him, but finally Morant runs out of bounds. This is a big series for Andrew Face and the defensive coordinator for Winston-Salem. Set in the third and sixth situation. You can't let him out of the hole right now. Coley is the tailback. Morant stays in at fullback as they stack the running backs on the third down. Cash to throw. 
still looking. Dumps it off to the far side, and that one off the fingernails of Blunt, the tight end. On a good hit on the far side, just as the ball reached him. And it's going to bring up a fourth down, and seven yards to go here for Hampton, and it'll be a kick time for the Pirates. Again, we've got to talk about it again, because there's Cash, the ability to scramble, to buy himself some more time. He feels pressure, sees it, points, hey, get right there. And I like the touch on that, just a little outside of Blunt's hands. Plus, I used to catch a lot of passes. Link caught two, didn't play last season. Bobbles that one, big possession for Hampton. Recruited by Hampton, went on to the University of Virginia didn't like it there and came back. Play for the Pirates as Hines will catch this one on a fair catch. And again, the battle of the punters continues to roll on here in the second period. As again, it's another punt, uh, two in a row now for Hampton. And coming up on our Ford halftime show, we'll have not only the highlights uh, and scores, also we'll have Dr. Martin interview from uh, Winston Salem and Dr. Harvey from right here at Hampton. And when you look around the Hampton campus. This is a thriving university. We'll find out why under the leadership of Dr. William Harvey at halftime tonight. Dr. Martin, the first-year chancellor at Winston-Salem. Interesting to talk to the man who's taken over there, a native of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. First and ten for the Rams. Woodbury rolling to his right. A lot of room there, but elects to throw underneath to Richby. But Richby can't come up with it. Woodbury possibly had a little bit more room running that ball. Of course, he's out there, and I'm way up here. But again, he throws underneath to Rigsby, who couldn't quite come up with the ball. It's easy for you to say, That's right. but that was a great play fake. It fools the entire Hampton front line. All he's got to do is keep it. I'm in agreement with you. I think he may have made a better decision running the football and picking up some yards and heading to the sideline to throw it low. Sets up a second down situation. Now Hampton can pin their ears back a little bit. Woodbury actually is falling through a little too much. Every ball he's thrown tonight has kind of been a nose down. And that time, uh, Rigsby again did not have a chance to make the catch. Second down and 10. Woodbury pitch out to Newkirk. Great tackle pinching down from the corner that time to knock him off his feet. And uh, denied an opportunity moving up was Nathan uh, Brown out of Virginia Beach. A 5'10 sophomore made a fumble recovery so far this year and a great tackle here. You just want to get him out there. You see Edge coming up to give the block. He cuts in, falls a block, a shoestring tackle. That's a big play for Winston. Brown has been playing behind Rashi Mahi, but he's uh, got an opportunity to play now with so much stuff coming wide. Mahi, number seven, now has replaced him at the right corner. Third down, six and a half to go. Woodbury for Winston Salem to throw does throw this one is complete and Hines will get it beyond the stake and then is thrown back I think his forward impetus gets him the first down Sam one of the ironies of this Winston Salem club is a they've won two games and this guy Hines has had not a good game in either one of them no pitching. only coming in with two catches last year had about 20 and has got great speed this time a little comebacker gets it get enough for the first down one of my pet peeves is first is third down and seven and you only run a five yard route that time he picked up the seven and gets the first down that's only the third reception of the year for Hines who caught 20 for nearly 300 yards last year and a couple of touchdowns testing the middle again Winston Salem and plenty of action back up field as well as receivers and secondary people battling each other after the play is over and I think that's the kind of the emotion of what's going on you see some first game this season 153 yards five touchdowns on 28 carries for Newkirk and he had to do that against South Carolina State and Willie Jeffries Coaching his last year for South Carolina State. One of Kermit Blunt's mentors, Newkirk's type of kid who gets stronger as the game goes on. Damon Dawson, Kerry Carson that time on the tap of Hampton. Those guys are dominating inside. Holloman is in there now at the tailback spot. Edge stays in the block. There's the ball tipped in the air and almost intercepted on the far side. At least Willie Bennett had a notion. As they were trying to slant it in again to Hines, it was tipped at the line of scrimmage. You tell your linemen to get in there, put pressure on and get your hands up. Who's that gets their hand up? Big number number six. Uh, Michael Bland comes up there, puts his hand up. We're talking about he's smart. He knows to put his hand up. 43 comes up also. Case and makes the play. But again, Hampton putting pressure on Winston-Salem State, not giving them time to run their plays. Well, definitely a passing situation now for Winston-Salem, heading along with Hines, flanked to the left side. 
two backs to block for Woodbury. Woodbury throwing, a flag is down. A catch is made. They get it ahead to Barboza, then he's thrown back. Well, let's see what the flag is going to be. I think the wide receiver on the far side, uh, Hines, I think jumped just about a half a second too soon, Sam. I think it was Barboza, the man that made the catch. As Hines was flanked to the near side with Hedden and Barboza, knowing they dialed his number. Got to get out there a little too quickly. That was a third down and ten. They did make enough yardage for the first down, so Hampton definitely would take this one. Stopping the clock with 5.28 left to go. I'd like to remind you, before this game is all over tonight, we, of course, will be naming it a most valuable player. And, of course, uh, that'll be the star of the game coming up for tonight's contest. Food Lion salutes the best player in each of our games, and they'll do so again tonight. Winston-Salem will draw the penalty here. Step it off five, third down and 15. Almost the same formation again as they bring again Hedden along with Hines to the near side. Woodbury now changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Play clock down to seven. That time to throw, he's throwing it up for grabs to Hines. Hines trying to turn in, but couldn't turn in inside of Mohi. As Rashi had him pretty well blocked to the outside, and Woodbury let fly, and he is, I believe, maybe down back upfield. Sam, that was a great job of coverage that time by Rashad Mahi. He pressed him early and stayed with him step for step, forced him to the inside, wouldn't let him try to go there, and the pass was overthrown. A good job by Hampton's coverage. And again, Joe Taylor told us yesterday that part of his defensive coverage, those guys were really good. They may go five and six backs, and they're, and they're strong players. Mahi, one of their senior corners. Had 38 tackles and an intercept last year, so experience in the corner. Paying dividends tonight against Hines, and it's kick time for Dinkins. Punt block. Three kicks for just a shade over 27 yards so far. Bennett is the lone receiver back around his 27. They come rushing again. Dinkins powers a good one out of there. Bennett at the 25. Gets a block. And then gets caught from behind and doubled. Willie Bennett on the coming out is Chen, number 10, who comes from behind to make this stop. And there's a good look Andre at the young man who will play at one of the corners for Winston Salem tonight. Andre Chen out of Winston Salem. He's a six foot sophomore and comes from behind to make that stop. Bennett is a speedster. If he can turn that corner, watch the block right there. We don't sit in the picture, but Andre Chen says, Hey, I'm going to chase you down. I don't care how fast you are. <laughs> I've got a chance to grab you. He makes the big play. So the fourth straight punt now by Winston-Salem. Gives the ball back to Hampton. And they give it to Coley. Montreal Coley. Surely one of the most sensational backs you'll see all year long. And the nice thing about Montreal Trolley, by the way, is the fact that he's already been selected to play as a senior in the Hula Bowl. That, of course, are the top seniors selected by the American Football Coaches Association, of which, by the way, Joe Taylor will be taking over as their president in January. But, of course, uh, his presidency and the play of Coley, totally separate deals. Coley has earned his trip to Honolulu. And they had a player last year, Jason Thomas, also playing with the Chargers now, also go to the Hula Bowl. So, again, you know, quality program, players are being seen, getting a chance to do things after they play for Hampton University. And one, Clement. He'll get enough for the first down and a couple more, but he earned it. Stops the clock at 3.58 as he'll move the chains on the first down. And we talked about it earlier about the second quarter being very important, and I still say that if Hampton does not score, if Winston-Salem can find a way to stop them on this drive, put a point up, they go in and still say, we've not played well and we're hanging around. You see the power of the back set time. That's Clement. You know, three or four guys got to bring him down. But again, we talk about importance of drives. Very important for Winston-Salem State. Keep Hampton off the board go down 14 nothing 14 3 come back in the second half and play some football number 71 leon fields over the football center for hampton cash ducks in behind him first down play cash looking to throw to smith he's got him in the open end against chin smith's got it at the five out of bounds at the five yard line Chin got totally turned around, could not turn and look at the ball. He might have had a chance to bat it away. 
But Smith gets behind him for a sensational catch and behind the defense. Wow, you get up there again. We've seen this about three times a day where Avery, I mean, Cash has just thrown the football up and Smith has come back. You can see at the end of the shot right there, a little bit of an offensive foul. He pushed him a little bit, gave some clearance, just like a Irvin play. Looks to push and gets the catch. First down for Hampton. So from their own five-yard line, or actually Winston's five, excuse me. Hampton University trying to put another six on the board, and Coley will try to accommodate and does. Touchdown, Hampton, 319 to go before halftime. So Coley comes up with a score. That'll be his fourth touchdown of the year. And Hampton will try to add the extra point. Winston-Salem, unfortunately, as our scenario was trying to play out with maybe Winston-Salem getting an opportunity to get a point. All of a sudden, a long pass from Cash to Smith pays off and results in a touchdown by Coley. And they're going to go for two after missing the extra point in the other one. Coley to the goal line. He will not make it. And Winston-Salem will throw him back. So a try for two by Hampton goes awry, and with 3.19 left to go here in the second period, Hampton hangs on out to a 19-0 lead. Ram. Coley, of course, carrying it in from the five for his fourth TD of the year. A great blocking. Pushing off the line. No one touches him until he gets to about the one-yard line. Just a good job by the offensive line by Hampton to push the Rams back, give the ball to Coley. There's the pulling guard coming out there, number 73. That's Steiner. Boom, bam, touchdown. Steiner, the pulling at left guard, and Vaughn and McCall. Right guard and tackle opening up the way, and Coley ends it after four plays, 100 and, excuse me, 65 yards, a minute 29 on the drive, and Again, finishes off with a four-yard run and the kickoff by Hampton to Winston. Coley, one of those players that almost everybody is taking a look at. The big question is, and I don't mean to throw a damper on it, but when you're going in at 5'9 uh, and 205 pounds, there's a little drawback in your height. But again, if you make it up with your great strength and skill, as we've seen some great ones in the NFL do, then they'll overlook that. But he will have to overcome an obstacle. Barry Sanders caught. Wilkins to the outside. Chased down by a host of Hampton players and rolled out of bounds at the 25. Boy, these guys are out there hitting. I mean, the crowd's getting ready to anticipate the hit. Woo! And ha! Uh, and there's no room to run for Winston-Salem State right now. Sam, they've got to be smart with 3.07 to go. If I'm them, I'm going to be ball control. You've got a timeout. Left, you've got two timeouts. Try to get something. Let's go into the half and regroup. We talked about it a moment ago, not giving up a big play. They've done that. Now they've got to get their composure. They've never been behind like this in a long time. They have been shut out since 1996 so this is a new territory for the Rams by the way I thought the crowd went ha woo they went, ooh, ah, woo. Ah, no, ah, okay. ooh, ah. I got you Woodbury who by the way was slightly shaken up not good numbers for him tonight only 13 yards off his eight attempts and he's gonna try to take this one up the middle sprints to the outside and Good defensive play again, and getting up off the bottom is going to be Damon Dawson out of College Park, Georgia. Westlake High School, 6'5", 285 pounds, number 90. That tripped him up. He, by the way, is one of those they really like to look for here at Hampton because of the accelerated SAT scores. Dawson, who's a transfer from the University of North Carolina, is on the all-me academic team of a year ago. Smart kid. Going to the house to recruit his brother, Ira David, number 97. He was thinking about transferring. Mom liked what he heard about Hampton. <laughs> said, hey, I'm sending both of them up there. That's right. That's a good recruiting trip. Now, Coach Taylor, their food bill is on you. <laughs> Newkirk sprints to the outside and into traffic. <laughs> the Hampton bench throws him back out on the field. After a gain of the play, it'll bring up a third down, though. And as they bring it all the way back around the 29, we're wondering where they're going to split it. A lot of trouble turning the corner. Yeah, like yeah, if you're a good running back, you want to try to get inside those numbers a little bit and get those shoulders around. Never quit got the shoulders around. And then he gets in that sea of blue. You can't find him anymore. Where'd Newkirk go? Mahi Brown on the right side. Bennett and Parker on the left have been the cornerbacks that have really done a good job tonight. Turning it in for Hampton. Third 
down. Six yards needed. Out of the shotgun, Woodbury. Woodbury trying to get away from traffic. Still looking. Falling to the near side, and it is going to be a reception by Hines. First down for Winston. Boy, you got to think, what in the world was going on on the line of scrimmage? And the lineman is not downfield on that one. That's a hard way to make a living if you're Torrey Woodbury. I mean, he evades about four or five tacklers, reverses his field, goes to the left, goes to the right, comes back. Again, taking that football. you got to tuck that in. And then having the foresight to make a play. Look, that's a nice pass. That's probably the best pass he's thrown tonight. Puts a strike in there to Hines. Safety Graham was the one that finally made the stop. Woodbury calling an option here at the line of scrimmage with only a buck 50 to go in the half. Over the middle, almost intercepted. They were trying to angle that one in and trying to get in the hands of Rigsby. Do they make the catch and the intercept? They do. And a great intercept indeed. It was diving in to make that one. It's going to be Travis Coleman. Foot right in his bread basket. Yeah, Coleman drops in coverage. Woodbury's locked in on one receiver. He does it right over the middle. He doesn't see Coleman. Does a great job of stepping right in the zone. Ball's right in his hands. Second interception of the year by Travis Coleman out of Goldsboro, North Carolina. And the junior 6-1 player has a, another one here. He had two last year. See, so he, he was looking for uh, Rigsby in the slot. Rigsby beat one guy, but there was uh, inside linebacker uh, Coleman coming in to make the play. He's a strong safety. I'm sorry. Compton, who has a touchdown catch tonight in motion. They fake the handoff. Cash in pursuit. Switch to the outside, and Octavius Cash replacing their starter of a year ago and for the last four years. That, of course, will be Roy Johnson. And one of the things that Joe Taylor told us, and I have to admit, both of us kind of smile at each other, he said he's a Michael Vick type player. Obviously, everybody knows Michael Vick from Virginia Tech. It was just a sophomore setting the world on fire. But again, you can see a little similarity. Maybe not the same talent, but he does have that same style. That, of course, Michael Vick possesses throwing and running the football. Well, I watched Vick put on a show last week, and I tell you, the kid, you know, jo Avery does have a, uh, the ability of Davis Cash to pass and run, and I like what he's doing tonight. Throwing again. Oh, Compton has it and gets nailed. What a great bit of Compton. Concentration that time as Michael Compton out of Woodbridge, Virginia, number 83, makes a great catch in traffic, but he's shaken up. Puts this ball on the money right there. Watch the concentration. Oh. There's a big hit right there. And then what I like, he stays in there. This is right from the end zone. Boom. Big hit, big catch. Victor White comes up and tries to jar the play, but again, a good play by Compton to hold on to it. Well, White, a sophomore out of Fayetteville, North Carolina, says, hey, I brought it all, but he still held on. Coley to the outside. Help coming down inside as the corners that time of Winston, led by Chin, turn it in. Kelly comes over to help out as well. 59.5 seconds to go here, and that is Compton, the man that really took that shot from White a moment ago. We can only hope for the very best from him. By the way, we'd like to send out our condolences to the family of Paul Hummel. Hummel's been one of the longtime crew members when we come into the Norfolk area. A uh, guy that just went over and above. And 100% every time we arrived on whatever scene we were, he uh, uh, passed away this past week. And to his family and all that knew Paul Hummel, I know we send our deepest regrets and our condolences to the Hummel family. Uh, Paul Hummel, one of the true great members of our crew here in the Norfolk area and all over the country when Creative Productions and ESPN goes out for a shoot. Paul Hummel always giving his best. We wish him the very best of luck in his endeavors on high. Paul Hummel will miss Certainly, and also to the, the Workman family, the loss of Shelly Workman, yes. Damon Workman's mom. Um, a tough time, I'm sure, but uh, everybody will find a way to get through this. We'll miss both of those. Workman, the starting linebacker for Winston-Salem, obviously not here tonight. Being replaced by uh, Tavares Oates out of Goldsboro, North Carolina. Once in Salem had a pretty good little uh, pipeline to Goldsboro yes, there. Yes, they do. But on a positive note, on a happier note, Adrian Ferguson, the SID at Winston-Salem State, told me last night, said, you got to tell my mom and my son happy birthday. I said, Adrian, we don't do that type of thing. But he told me to do that. And I said, I'll do that, and I'll tell Sauce in Winston-Salem happy birthday, too. I'm not supposed to do that, but I did it anyway. That's right. You can't do that, though. Can't do that. Happy birthday, Sauce. Cash, second down, six, fake handoff. He's got another keeper. Cash dives. Touchdown, Hampton. Thank you.
Maybe there is some Michael Vick and Octavius Cash. Wow. That was a design play, just a quarterback keeper. They froze the linebackers and everybody else when they fake hand off Italy, and he dives it in for the score. And Joe Taylor told us yesterday that you would see some quarterback keeper. You saw Larry Vaughn out of the corner of his screen pulling, and when Vaughn comes out to make the play, they follow him at 6'3", 300. It makes it very easy, a quarterback keeper, and this game has gotten very ugly for the Rams. Kip this time is up and good. And with 53.8 seconds left to go, 26 nothing Hampton with the lead. As Pavlik makes the extra point. Great job by Cash to dive that one into the end zone. Hey, he's, he's had a very solid football game. Again, a kid that didn't play much at all last season behind Johnson now comes in. And if you are the Hampton Pirate fans, if you're Coach Joe Taylor, you got to be happy about how he's playing. Got to be. Hey, what Forbes, Steiner, Fields, Vaughn, and McCall. That's the down five. Really did a job as they neutralize that good, hard-charging line of Winston-Salem. Open up the hole. Four plays, 52 yards. Only 50 seconds and 15-yard touchdown run by Cash. And the point after now makes it a 26 to nothing score. Sam, and, and to put this in perspective of how dominant Hampton's been on the offensive end or how they're taking advantage of big plays, Winston-Salem State only gave up an average of, of 14 points last season. They've only given up 13 this season. They went a whole season almost giving up seven in the fourth quarter. This has been a dominant performance by Hampton. 264 yards total offense so far for Hampton. Winston-Salem trying to make something happen on a good return. And John Holloman will bring it from all the way down inside his own 10. Brings it upfield with a flag down. Clock stops with 43.7 seconds to go. Stop was made on the near side by number 22. That is Comer Best, a sophomore out of nearby Richmond, Virginia. By the way, this is one of the first trips that Stan and I have made to the Hampton Roads area. And we actually, I think, in some ways knew where we were going this time. Yeah, we didn't get lost but two times. That's right. Once when I was driving, once you usually get lost like three times. Well, we found the restaurant, though. Uh, we did find the restaurant. <laughs> it was a lovely tour of Hampton Roads last night, though. Chuck Williams, our referee for tonight. Bentley goes against Hampton. Face mask is the call. We're not totally sure if the call is going out over the air or not. And the fact that we do not hear it, we might get confirmation from the truck. Either. So we are not uh, not hearing the referee tonight. So we will try to uh, give you explanations as well we can. First down, Winston. They'll try to air out a couple here, I assume, even though they had the last one intercepted. Playing in hot pursuit. Woodbury again, that nose getting down on that football, trying to throw to the far side, trying to get it in the waiting arms of Shepard, Ollie Shepard out of Williamston, North Carolina, but it was well short. And I guess when Michael Bland is chasing you, you want to get rid of the football a little early. As quickly as you possibly can. He's not doing a good job of getting his shoulders around. And again, you look at that, the 12 penalties, uh, 80 yards, six today for Hampton. You know, Hampton's a team that doesn't have a lot of penalties. Winston Selman have had big penalties and big turnovers, and that's what put them 28 points down. Woodbury on a second down and 10, 38 seconds to go before halftime. Woodbury in the pocket, it's blocked and knocked down at the line of scrimmage again. And boy, that uh, offensive defensive line, excuse me, of the Hampton Pirates, well schooled. Herbert Parnham has done a great job of saying, fellas, when you're making the charge, keep those hands up. And they have done so. Just getting the hand up is what you want your defensive lineman to do if you're taking the block. And I think that's Bland again. Just a second deflection tonight if that's Bland. Is that Bland? Yeah, I believe yes, it, it is. Was. Yes, it is. Michael Bland, the scouts looking at him. He'll be playing on Sunday somewhere next year. Gonna have to get a little bit more beef on it. 295, though. But he's got some great quickness and speed and a very intelligent player. And he also has a little uh, transmitter in his helmet to know what Winston-Salem's calling. And when we're talking about it, yeah. how about that? Way to go. Our scholar athlete from Hampton, you saw on the fifth-year senior, of course, a graduate student, tutors English to other student athletes and students on campus. And if, if I'm Kermit Blunt, 
I run this down, I go back to the house, and I kind of regroup and come back for the second half. Exactly what he's doing is the clock winds down, and that'll do it as the first half comes to an end. <laughs> and you see not only is Treaton Smith All-American preseason, but also the Sports Network. Second teamer last year, a predicted preseason All-American, Michael Bland will end the first half as again Hampton comes up with a 26 to nothing lead. We'll meet the two leaders of our universities. Right after we return for our halftime brought to you by Ford. We'll do that and more. Hampton with a 27th lead at halftime. Yeah. Well, it's been a fun night for the Hampton University fans as they've got a commanding 26-0 lead here at halftime over Winston-Salem. Well, the Rams, I'm sure our Budweiser stats are not going to look too pretty. Well, we take a look at those as, again, Coley, along with Cash, have led the attack for Hampton University in getting these numbers. You see them on the board now, 264 yards total compared to 117, 85 rushing, 42 to Winston-Salem by Newkirk so far. Yeah, and i tell you what, you look at that, the total offense is just so by North by Hampton, you know, by Hampton. And the thing about it is a big play, the first downs, but the two turnovers, the two turnovers early in this football game set the stage for what we see right now. And again, the penalties, four penalties, 51 yards, they've been big penalties against the Rams. Again, you've got to put the first half behind you, if you can, and come back and play scrub the ball the second half. Well, we had told you that Hampton will have the football to start the second half, and they will, as Hales along with Coleman will be back deep to receive this kickoff from Kermit Blunt and Winston-Salem University. Just out of the way in the third quarter of tonight's football game. Kermit Blasher made some adjustments. Chris Dinkins ready to kick off here. And again, Hales and Coleman deep. It'll come up short though. Bounding out in front of Coleman. Gets a block behind, but then it's going to be spread out and flags flying everywhere. As he gave ground, and he'll pay for that back to the 19. But a flag is down back up field around the 25. And Sam, knowing current Blunt as we both do, one of the things I'm sure he told his football team is I want you to go out now, forget the score, go out and play play Winston-Salem football. Go out and hit somebody. Make some big plays, and let's see what can happen. Kermit Blunt winning his first CIAA championship last year, undefeated in the conference at 7-0. Pete Richardson won one at uh, Winston-Salem before moving on to Southern back in 1990. And Bill Hayes won three times as the CIAA Coach of the Year at Winston-Salem. the receiving team, the return, first down. So the microphone of Chuck Williams back working on this third. Of course, Bill Hayes now the... Very, very successful coach over North Carolina A&T. Got a big date with Elon next week. They play their first game in Aggie football history under the lights on campus. And then November the 11th, they're right up here to play this hand squad. That's going to be a good football game. By the way, there's a pretty good rematch coming up next week right here at Hampton. Southern University comes in. The losers to Hampton in the Heritage Bowl last year will be here next week. They break it through. Getting it all the way out past the 20-yard line. There in the ball is Coley. He picks right up where he left off. Coley had 34 yards in the first half, and he gains about 15 right there, right off the crack. Not a good start if you're Winston-Salem State, especially on that defensive end. You don't want to see Coley get his shoulders turned and start making plays. Stephen Kelly, number nine, out of Dorchester, South Carolina. Junior free safety, number nine, comes up to make the stop. First down, Hampton. They're rolling again right off the bat here in the third period. Fake by Cash. Runs back to his own five, throws. Oh, in and out of the hands of Blunt, but gone out to try to catch that at the 30, and the officials discussing was it a catch or not. He did come down hard, and the ball sprung loose. They're not stepping it off. It's going to be an interception by Blunt, the tight end. I think they're calling it a completion. There's a little half roll, goes back the other way, puts the ball right on the money, just outstretched hands. Blunt, 6'5", 235. Uh, oh, he caught it in the air off the bounce. It didn't hit the ground. Good hands. Watch this. There's the ball. It bounces up, and he catches it, and that's a completion. What a great concentration by the freshman out of Chesapeake, Virginia. And actually started his college career at the University of Virginia, but elected since Hampton had recruited him earlier and wanted to transfer. He's come back once again here into the Hampton Roads area. First down after that great catch by Blunt. 
And Hampton University already leading 26 to nothing. Try to attack some more. You know, when you look at the record of Hampton in the MEAC, they were not eligible when they made the move over in 1995. In five years, they're 25-9 and nine against MEAC opponents. And, of course, they've won two MEAC championships. Two MEACs on the Heritage Bowl. Again, a, a great program. They were super when they were in the CIAA, and they just rolled it right over into the MEAC. And uh, straight ahead to Coley. Good interior lineman making the stop there, getting up off the bottom for Winston-Salem Wesley along with Williams. You know, Dr. Martin of Winston-Salem made a great statement to me, and we all are very cognizant of that, that follow the CIAA. You cannot lose Hampton and Norfolk State in your league, such high-profile universities, without trying to replace those people with someone else that plays that caliber and with that kind of growth ideas. And I'm sure, of course, Leon Carey, the commissioner, and all of those that are in desiring to make things happen in the CIAA are cognizant of that and making a very effort to try to make sure they get that. But what the good thing is is that teams such as Winston-Salem State, Virginia Union, those two guys play each other next week and stepped up. And with the CIAA football championship on the horizon in November, good things are happening with the 12 that we have in football in the schools. Robert Mackey, number 51, and number 95, Corey Williams, made at the junction. And in between was Cash. And they got some dividends out of that as they drop him all the way back to the 20-yard line. Third down. And they'll need about a 23 for a first down. Got to keep pressure on the quarterback. A good job of staying there. Corey Williams comes up and makes a hit. Again, they got to put pressure. Keep cash in the pocket. He rolls this time. Nowhere to go. A good job by him. Kits there and makes the play. Third down play. Hampton again came out, made a couple of crisp first downs, and now they're backed up. But the normal tight end in motion, but the play clock is going to cost them five. So Cash a little bit discombobulated right now. Joe Taylor, the coach of Hampton, made a comment concerning Cash and the fact that he is starting his third game. Third down. As the quarterback for Hampton, he said, we don't try to audibleize the line of scrimmage much the quarterback. However, the down linemen make offensive calls based on what they see across the line. Larry Vaughn does most of the calls. Fields, of course, is the center. Steiner, Vaughn, and Fields do a lot of the play calling on the blocking schemes up front rather than audibleizing at the line of scrimmage make with it, cash. Making it very simple for him. Let him just concentrate on the execution of the play. Vaughn, 90% great out last week. Miak offensive lineman of the year. Cash under pressure throwing short of Smith. Well covered that time back in the secondary and was picked on Hargroves, number 28. Was back there and had some help that time. As coming up was uh, Victor White, number 45, but well underthrown by Cash. And a positive for Winston-Salem in the fact they have now forced Hampton deep into their own territory and a kick coming out and Hines near midfield to field it. And Hines is a big player. They got to get this thing. They'll get it over to 50. Get it over there. Put something on the board real quick to make this a ball game. Kicker, Bolden considers himself quite an athlete. He makes a lot of tackles, but Joe Taylor's first to say, I don't want you making tackles. Almost blocked, but not quite. Hines will get a catch of this one. Tries to get away, but it's going to lose some ground all the way back to his own 46. Good coverage that time by Hampton as they got number 20 down on in a hurry. That's Lawrence Smith. Also down on top of it was Nathan Brown. So Smith and Brown flying down to cover that ball. Snap a little low. Maybe he is a good athlete, Bolden. Gets that punt away and did a great acting job. If he can't play, maybe he can be an actor or something. Falls down, doesn't get the call. Winston-Salem gets the ball at their own 44-year line. 46, excuse me. They've got to get points on the board. Can't talk about it enough, Sam. they got to do it. You wonder why there may not have been a flag. One of his own men was blocked back into it. Good call by the officials, a no call. Had it been a Winston-Salem player, there could have easily been a flag. Woodbury goes to Newkirk, nothing doing. Well, I tell you what, very active linebacking core. And, of course, down five linemen that seem to be everywhere. For Hampton, led in the middle that time by Sandy Towns, number 90, out of Rivera Beach in Florida. No room at the end. You look at that one, two, three, bland in there, coming up to make a solid hit, and then followed up by Tremaine Hughes and a host of his friends from Hampton. So all kinds of uh, good defensive pressure up front by Hampton. Woodbury with a second down and 10. You see the time left in the third. 
Woodbury drops, angles it, almost knocked down and intercepted that time by Tremaine Hughes. The sophomore from Tallahassee got his hand on it, but just couldn't pull it down. They were trying to angle that over the top to Terrell Bright, the tight end out of Snow Hill, North Carolina. And Hughes just does a good job. We saw it earlier where the linebackers dropped in coverage, tried to float it over him. Hughes goes about 6'2", 215. Woodbury didn't have enough air in it. But see, Woodbury, just a good drop, looks over everything. Nice touch of the ball. It's a little wobbly at the end, and there's a deflection, a big play, because I think someone could have done something good for Winston-Salem State, but he didn't catch it, Marcus Bright. Well, crucial third downs, yes. Woodbury, big pressure. Gets this in the way, and it's complete. Not enough for a first down as that time they swung it out of the backfield to Brian Edge, the fullback, but he's not going to get enough for a first down. He'll need about five more. And the kick team for Winston-Salem will try to pin Hampton uh, University back in their own territory and you again. you almost wonder if you're Kermit Blunt right now down 26 nothing. do you go for this? Edge has to come back. So much pressure on, on Woodbury. He gets in trouble right there. Just can get it off. So they go for this maybe a little fake right now. Dinkins will kick it away for Winston-Salem. Just a shade over 30 yards, under 30 yards, just four kicks. Dribble one back to him. He gets it out of there, but it's partially blocked, picked up, then fumble, picked up again. And Hampton will have great field position. As they got several people getting their hands on it, but they finally come up, and it's Parker with a hand on it. And hanging on, also coming up, there's going to be Mohi, who finally gets a handle and brings it ahead. Mohi's having a really good game. He's come up with some big hits, had an interception. Again, the low snap. Let's see this ball right there. Just never gets to him on the ground. You got to run for your life. And Hampton's daily get the play. And Hampton's right back in business again, Sam. One of the most disappointed players was Darren Green, number 39. He had his hands on it for Hampton to let it get away. And while he got it, it's only totally fumble. Winston Salem gets it back. So after the big rush and a bad snap on the punt for Winston, they get it right back as Coley fumbles the football away for the first time this year. And Winston Salem will take over the ball at the 47 yard line, but still trailing big 26 0, 11 0, 7 to go in the third. He gets in there. I don't think he ever gets his hands on the ball, and the ball just bounces right back up. I believe that's uh, number 53. Is that uh, Jay Moody comes up with the uh, with the fumble? And if I'm Winston right now, I'm Moody. Man in motion. That's Rixby. They're swinging out to him. Rixby's got it in a crease. Sidestepping one man to the near side. Rigsby will knock it out of bounds, and one of our scholar athlete selections takes a big reception and runs it out of bounds after a great pass by Woodbury. Oh, what a nice looking that time by Woodbury and a nice reception by Rigsby. Woodbury does a good job that time getting rid of the football. Three step drop. There he looks one way, throws, snaps something on that ball. And then Rigsby, a great ability to run after the catch. 104 yards, one touchdown coming into the night. Had three catches in a big place. Bowie State last week's got speed. Sherman Rigsby. First down and 10 yards to go. Rigsby, the U.S. Army's man that you got on 3.3 business management. Wide receiver in last week's CIAA Offensive Player of the Week. As they hand it off, and now Winston-Salem is trying to make something happen. As Nuker gets the handoff and rumbles it down into the 25 yard line. Offensive line across the front for Winston-Salem. Powell, the two Andrews brothers, Brian and Sean, Wilson, and Pegues on the right side. As again, they try to make something happen up front. And Woodbury has a second down and four to go. The floodgates are not going to necessarily open Winston if they should score, but it certainly won't hurt. Pitch to Newkirk on the corner. One of the first times he's been able to turn the corner dives. No touchdown signal. He got to the five. And he thought it was a goal line. I like that. You <laughs> with the option. Well, you got to die for every yard you can get right now. And this is the best drive of the night for Winston-Salem State. This looks like the Ram offense that put up over 350 yards a game last season. There's the option. Reading the cover, reading the corner. Get that new Kirk. Runs with a purpose. Look at those knees up. Takes a little Boom. Hits somebody and keeps on and dives out there. Give me some more yards. Key to the whole play was Brian Edge, the fullback, blocking those corners on the outside. On the edge. And Kirk was able to cut inside. First and goal to go. New Kirk. No place to run. 
Gets it all the way back to the line of scrimmage, but that's about all. They're in the red zone. It's very difficult to try to run the ball inside right now. Spread them out. Try to go your slants. Maybe option. This is when you want Woodbury to possibly run the football. But I'll say it again. I'll say it one more time. What's Winston-Salem got to do right now? They got to score. They got to score. You, you learn well. You listen to me. Very good. <laughs> Newkirk, by the way, approaching the 3,000 mark as a career. 2,931 before this last little scrimmage. And he's already added about 35, 40 yards to that. Woodbury, he's going to keep it to the corner. He's got a screen block by Hines. Touchdown to Salem. So the Rams with a five-yard run will take it. And uh, Woodbury, as you see, is sprawled on the track. I'm not sure if he was hit getting there. We have to look around the corner to see or if he just slipped on this track I think as he, he stepped out of bounds. He cramped up, Sam. I don't know. But this is what I was talking about a few minutes ago where you spread the defense. There's a little play fake, a nice little naked fake. He's out there all by himself. I don't see where he pulls up to see what happens. And after the play, let's after see. the play, no, you see him just up. when he gets in the end zone, he pulls up. And I don't know. I, I'm going to say clamp or cramp. But again, I'm not a doctor. He definitely did pull up on yeah. that leg. 9.14 left to go here in the third period. And another player is down at the goal line, and a Hampton player is down as well. Can't see the number. But, yeah, you could see Woodbury just as he got in the end zone pull up, and certainly you hope for Winston-Salem State and for Woodbury's sake that it's something very minor he can get back in this football game. But that was the momentum play that time for Winston-Salem. And it would be indeed a very tough break for Winston-Salem getting back with a score because their backup quarterback is a freshman, Rodney Milburn. And has thrown only one pass so far this year and only very, very limited action behind Woodbury. I think that's Vernon Woodson right there. Watch him get rolled up. Watch the block. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Vernon Woodson. So, Woodson. Again, you can see him looking at that right knee as he really got it hit from the side. And when you're in that much traffic, you've got to watch from all directions. And there's Woodbury being helped off as well. And he does not appear to be heading back towards the line of scrimmage. He does now. Eddie Stevens, the athletic trainer for Winston-Salem State, does a great job getting these guys on the field. And you saw Coach play. Again, that's what I like about it. You watch football games all the time. A guy gets hurt. The coach, you know, doesn't come out there. Kermit Blunt, one of the first people out there on the field to check on his player. And good to see Woodson for Hampton coming off the field under his own power also. And you still see Woodbury heading. He is with that kind of walk across the back of the end zone. It does not look good for him to make a return. Dinkins ready to try to add the extra point here. Hines will be the holder for Winston-Salem, who have cracked the ice finally here with 9.14 left to go in the third as Woodbury from five carries it in. But it may have been a costly touchdown. Still waiting, I think it's for Woodbury to get all the way around the yeah. field and off. Yeah. And he is now... They almost have to wait, uh, apparently have to wait for him to get all the way back into the team box across the way before play can resume. Once he gets outside, the play, he's got to walk a little further, 25. Now you hear the whistle blow, and then he can put it in play. So Dinkins now, who has visualized this extra point going through, let's see if he can make it happen for the Rams. It's blocked. Can be returned. It can indeed, but it will not be. But that time, Gregory Scott, number 99, the junior out of Portland, Virginia, and Southampton High School makes the block and blocked it away, and it's going to be no on the extra point. Well, Winston-Salem did get a point. They got six to be exact, not the extra point trail by 20. Well, Winston-Salem is on the board, but still trailing by 20. They'll kick off to Hampton. 9-14 left to go here in the third period. Dinkins kicking off. He'll line drive one to the near side. And at the 15-yard line, it's fielded there, and upfield it comes for Hampton. And they'll bring it out to around the 29-yard line. 
Let's take another look at that score by Woodbury again, which could have been a costly one and a possible leg injury here. You see the play fake, and everybody's looking at Newkirk, and he just put the ball on the hip, and you see right there, he starts to hurt a little bit, and he just kind of goes to the end zone. And hopefully, I couldn't see him on the sideline as they walked him off, but hopefully he's going to return. First in Tampton. Octavius Cash making his third start as a quarterback for the Hampton Pirates. Played in the shadow of Roy Johnson all the last three years and now getting his opportunity to play. They hand it off. This is Morant. And Morant with some pretty good authority out near the 39-yard line, which could be close to a first down right off the bat. And guess who's blocking for it? It was Coley. So he not only runs with the ball, but blocked very well. And Morant's going back and saying, you know, this is kind of, I like this. I like this. I, I don't like carry this. the ball a lot. I only <laughs> carried the ball about five times all season. I mean, they like this. Hey, Coley blocks for me. Now block for him in a minute. Clement will go in, replace Morant at the fullback spot, blocking now for Coley. They split the backs behind Cash. 8.39 to go in the third. Hampton with a commanding lead at 26-6 to six and operating with a first and 10 at the 39. Coley. Tried to dive his way through to about the 42, but there was nothing doing. Linebackers just stacked that one up after a good charge from the inside. Very important drive if you're a Hampton fan, simply for the fact that Winston-Salem scored and you don't want to give them any type of momentum. Don't let them think, hey, we may can come back in this football game. So let's see if this is going to be a very time-consuming drive. Joe Taylor told me yesterday, Sam, that he wanted to dominate the football time of possession win. Well, they haven't really won that, but they haven't needed to. They've scored very quickly. Let's watch this drive and see how long it takes and what the results will be. They have indeed uh, controlled the football game and even a, a loss they had against New Hampshire and certainly last week against Howard in the win. Back to throw his cash to the near sideline to Smith. Diving catch. And now they're going to say he trapped it. So Smith trying to get the fingernails under it. That time the nose of the football for Cash kind of turned underneath on Smith, and he couldn't quite come up with it. Smith had caught four balls for 112 coming in, about a 28-yard average. Surreal Smith gives you nightmares if you're a defensive back. His speed takes him down, and he has a little comeback. The ball, the nose of the ball just hits the ground. Victor White trying to cover him. He said, wow, I'm not glad that ball hit the ground. Smith has only caught one tonight for five yards, so he's well under his average. Blunt, the tight end, goes from right side to left side. Cash with a third down and nine. In the pocket. Plenty of time to throw. Dumps it off to Clement, the fullback. First down, down to the 40-yard line. Boy, you got to credit that offensive line for Hampton, Forbes, Steiner, Fields, Vaughn, and McCall. They stood their ground and gave Cash the time to look for the third option on his pass. It was Clement, the fullback, out of the backfield. Another third down situation. This time, third and eight. Hampton gets out of there. Three of eight tonight in third down efficiency, converting. Waiting, waiting, looking. Finding your dump off your third guy. Clement knows what to do with it. Keeps his drive going. Calvin Bryant, number 44 for Winston, up to make the stop for the Rams. First down for the Pirates. Trying to move their record to 2-1 and one after losing to the Hampshire here to start the season, winning last week in New York. Hand off Moran. Splits through a gaping hole, carries it down to around the 30-yard line. And now the efficiency of the offensive front line for Hampton really starting to step again. Forbes at 310, Stein at 300, Fields at 235, Vaughn we've talked about so many times at 300, and McCall, the strength of that right side of the line, they're just blowing off the defensive line of Winston-Salem State. By the way, Fields, the guy who's a sophomore from Washington, D.C., number 71, the center, was told by Coach Joe Taylor, he said, I don't think you're going to play for us. He said, yes, I am. And now he's the starting center here for Hampton, who snaps it back to Cash. And they run it ahead for a few more yards. But those are the kind of great stories you like to hear, Stan. A guy that perseveres. He stayed in the weight room. He was on the scout team, the coaching team, all the things. He did what he had to do and paid his dues. And now you're, you're not able to keep him out of there. Yeah, making the line calls. Has the smarts to do that. Had a great offseason, a great spring. Worked out, worked out, got better. And now has a chance to start. And he's doing a great job for Hampton. Because uh, Brian Hope from Franklin, Virginia, another sophomore, had been projected to start before the spring work. No gain on the last carry. Holy to the outside. Jumps over a tackle. Carries tackles all 
the way down to about the 10 yard line. And for the first time tonight, Sam, I see a little fatigue in the Winston Salem team. They've been on the field. It's not a hot night, but they're just getting pounded and pounded. And it looks like they're very tired this time. Coley will approach around 60 yards on his carries for tonight. You can see how tough it is to bring him down on a first 10 to go. At the 12-yard line in Winston Territory. And did you see Coley got in the air, put the feet up, jumped over somebody, put him down, and made a cut. I like Montreal Coley. Coley split left. Clement took behind the quarterback, Cash. They give it to Clement. Clement to the five, barreling his way down to around the two. Well, I tell you what, you don't want to get in the way of those churning legs of Coley or Clement. You'll get yourself absolutely run over if you're not squared and ready to make a tackle on those two guys. you got to remember that Clement's a lineman, so he, he's used to taking a lick, and so he's glad to take the football. Carried it nine times already. Look at this. Oh, just takes a little contact. Doesn't matter. Keeps those legs churning, as you said, and almost, almost in the end zone. Give it to him again. Let him score. Let the lineman score. Joe Taylor, very proud getting youngsters up. Unfavorable situation such as the Detroit with Clement bringing him to a favorable situation, and he has blossomed. Coley to the goal line. Touchdown, Hampton. So Montreal Coley comes up to his second touchdown of the night as he takes it in. I won't say untouched, but until he got to the goal line, there was a lot of contact on him. And who led the way for him? Clement makes the clean block, pops the guy to the outside, oh, and Coley just eases his way in for the end zone. And we talked about it a moment ago. What a solid drive that time for the Hampton Pirates. Well, a kick here by Paul Pavlik. Kick is up and good. Kicking out of Christopher Parker's hole. And the kick is good. So the Pirates of Hampton and the Miak having their way tonight over Winston-Salem on the CIAA as Coley scores his second touchdown for a 33-6 lead. Well, sometimes you have to start very, very, very young to have the dreams of playing. Either in the band, got a pretty good step. That's it. That's it. Our football for Hampton on take a kid to the ball game night here in Hampton. Well, a lot of kids for Hampton have showed up tonight as they've got a 33 to 6 lead. Wilkins will bring it out, but does not reach the 20 yard line, and there's a flag down on the end of that run. Actually, that was Kelly, excuse me, bringing that one on the return. And brought it out to the 15-yard line as Bolden had separated a gun one deep down into Winston territory. Blocking. You can see below the waist that time by Winston. will back this up a little further. And the drive a moment ago. Took, him, took some time off the clock. 4.22 to be exact. And, of course, Coley doing it from seven yards away for the second score. Low the waist on a receive team, one over a long back, half the distance goal line, first down. By the way, Chuck Williams, our referee, Jeff Ortez, the umpire, linesman is Calvin Harris. Our line chef tonight is Larry Morin. Our field judge has been Dave Jacob tonight. Our back judge, Keith Washington, and our side judge tonight is Donnell Leathers, the crew calling the game tonight again with Chuck Williams, our man in charge. 431, third period. Winston deep in their own territory. They'll hand it off to Newkirk. Newkirk actually ran into one of his old men trying to block someone through the hole and got knocked down. And again, gain by Newkirk will be negated a bit on the end by a good collision out in front of him. And Woodbury's back in the ball game for Winston-Salem State. Sam, so that's a good sign. And what they've got to do is play with that same intensity they had on the drive a moment ago. They cut this lead, come back, score again. You can look for, for Hampton to do two things with Woodbury back in. Obviously, they're not going to look for him to run, possibly, until he proves that he can. So they're just going to lay back when he gets in that pocket and just try to sprint right ahead on him. Put pressure on him. Hand off to Newkirk. He's going to try to foil him with this running game of Terry Newkirk and Newkirk from Wallace, North Carolina. Wallace Rose High School, they were the uh, 2A state champions in 1994 with this kid running in the backfield. Number one rusher coming in, went over 1,000 yards last year, has had seven 100-yard games to his career, including 158 
against South Carolina State to start the year. This is a tough kid. You know, I, I like him. He told me he got married this summer. So, you know, he's really got to run. <laughs> he's got to do a lot of stuff. Man, but he's him. a inside outside guy like Jerry Newkirk. What, what does he get to do his honeydew list is what I want to know. <laughs> First and ten for Winston. Woodbury back in a bad wheel over the middle. Complete. And it's Ollie Shepard coming up with a catch, catch at the 35 line. Something that Winston-Salem needed, and now Woodbury is down again. Possibly took a pretty good hit that time after he got that ball away. But he is definitely down and hurt this time again. Let's see. Looks like he's favoring that leg just a little bit. He goes back. Oh, yeah, he takes a shot. He takes a shot after the pass is thrown. Look, that was Scott, number 99. Look at anything. Corner screen. Boom. Was that Scott? Yes, it is. Gregory Scott. George Scott, excuse me. Wow. Well, as Gregory Scott hammers Woodbury into the turf, he's getting up slowly again. And you can see the numbers on him tonight far below what he has been able to do so far. One interception so far tonight. That was a great one as they stepped in front of a, a pass as Coleman made the intercept on him. And again, uh, he pulled up with a bad leg, and now he may have been uh, hit hard on the head after he hit the turf. But even though they're looking at the leg again. We were looking with a little bit of anguish here, certainly at Woodbury, but back up field, Hines has gone the length of the football field as if he's looking for something on the field. And I'm not sure what it is. He's out here at midfield right in front of the Hampton bench. I think he's looking for his other glove. He's got one glove on. I don't see the other one. I guess he wears two gloves. I mean, it makes sense. He got two hands. They give you two gloves and a pad. He should wear them both. I don't know. Now, he is walking back towards his huddle. He, he's been down all the way back to the other end. We're going to take a local timeout with minutes and 10 seconds to go in the third. Right now, the Pirates still commanding the game. 33-6 to six from Hampton tonight. Before a kick coming by Dink, Winston Salem with a score on the board earlier on. Irish Springs Sports Hunt for Distance Context was held. And take a look at Kevin Beard. Hangs one out of the end zone for 36 yard. And yeah, I am the man. Pump it up, pump it up. Pump, pump it, it up, up, baby. Kevin Beard, our congratulations to being our punt for distance man. Brought to you by Irish Spring. Punting is pretty good distance right now as Dinkins back and fumbling it away. Parker's finally going to come on top of it for Hampton after Smith had fumbled it for Hampton. So Christopher Parker comes up with a fumble. They got a rebound. Stats through three periods, and of course the numbers keep mounting for Hampton, but at least now 100 yards here for Winston-Salem. 43 rushes for Hampton, 43 points, I should say, for 346 yards total offense. I think that tells the story, the inability of Winston-Salem State to, to get the ball, move the football, couple of turnovers, and then domination of making the big plays by Hampton. Octavius Cash will bring his Hampton Hearts to the line of scrimmage. Clement and Coley are the running backs. They give it to the second back, and that's Coley. Montrell Coley sticking his way through, and I think maybe his knee might have gone down. That may be the indication. Sam, that might be a case where the foot's quicker than the eye. You know, we usually say the hand's quicker than the eye. I don't know if his knee touched this, but that was a quick cut by Coley. Next year, he'll be able to do that, touch the knee without being touched and keep on playing. Roll the videotapes. Oh, let's find out. No. <laughs> <laughs> Coley a little disappointed as he ripped off. He'll be replaced by Hales. Travis Hales, number 33 out of Richmond, will check in. Let's see it. Let's see again. No. Oh. no. Official give it, and he take it away. By the way, they do have a uh, video uh, replay here in the stadium. You heard a little groan from some of the fans looking on. And off to Hales. On a second down play, he'll gain about five. Another angle. Let's see if that knee did touch down here. Oh, right, here's going to be the cut right here. Yeah. Oh, no, well, you know, he's only 5'9", see, and so he's so close to the, so close to the ground that you thought he was already down the ground. He wasn't. You know, there's a little daylight left there. Are our camera guys good or are our camera guys Our good? guys are best. Huh? They got that. 
They got that. I'm Take it, fellas. <laughs> Plug has been brought to you by No More Money Company. No More Money. Third down, two yards to go here for Hampton. Cash with a long count. Hands it off. This is Morant trying to get some more running room. He's still on his feet. Finally swarmed under by Winston's defense. On the near side. Hargrove comes up from a safety spot. And the other safety is uh, White comes over to finally make the stop. First down for Hampton. And you can start to see, obviously, 33-6 to six in the fourth. Kind of a little hang-ahead type situation here for Winston, and that's unfortunate. Well, Winston's not accustomed to this. This is happening. Uh, 1996, they played Southern Illinois, 48-12 game. That's a non-division school. That's the worst, the most points have been given up since Kermit's been around. So this doesn't happen a lot, but they'll be back. They'll be ready to play next week. There's Cash giving the ball off. Coley will carry it. About four yards on the play. I wouldn't be surprised that after this drive, Sam, score or non-sport, if Joe Taylor to probably take Coley out of the game, and maybe even Cash. You don't want to risk the injury with these guys playing because they got the ball for the MEAC schedule right in their face. By the way, remember Compton that took that terrible hit back after making the catch? He is not playing right now. He is uh, not on the field. Uh, Terrence Patrick, number 80, has taken his spot and has played it. But all the offensive uh, so far here in this half for Hampton. Another handoff up the middle. Nothing doing there. Gain of maybe a yard in the play. Coley. Bring up a third down and run about five to go here for the Pirates. But we talked with Dr. Harvey at halftime. It'll be just marvel, of course, the basketball facility in the last few years. The renovation of Armstrong Stadium is magnificent. The football offices are second to none in Division I AA, and maybe Division I. A brand new student uh, activity center right behind the stadium is going to be magnificent. It goes on and on. Since 1978, they built 14 new buildings on campus under the leadership of Dr. Harvey. Little side pass to the outside, Cash Smith. White, the corner, coming up to make the stop after the catch is made on that third down play. No gain on the play. It'll bring up fourth down. They'll still need five. You're talking about the, the football complex we had a chance to visit yesterday. Joe Taylor's office. He's got, they've got meeting rooms for the offense, the defense, the press. Go in that room. I mean, it was so pretty in there. I had to take my shoes off. I just got to get mud on the floor or something. A little slant. Three yards, not quite for first down. Hampton will probably keep this on the ground, try to turn some more clock, get the first down if they cannot, just play defense as they've done. You see Smith coming up limping a little bit now. As Winston Salem, I think, is taking a timeout with 11.04 to go. And they'll go to the sideline, and we will take the timeout as well. 11.04 to go in this tonight. Winston will possibly get their hands on the ball, or will they? We'll find out what the Pirates have decided to do. We return to Hampton in a moment. Welcome back to our second half coverage brought to you by Men and Speedstick. Sam Smith along with Stan Luter are here tonight with you. Don't forget that over many of these same stations you'll see football next week. Southern against Jackson State. Tim McKire, the three-time Super Bowl champion, will join me in the Superdome for SWAC football next week. CIAA trying to challenge the meet right now. And a whistle blows, and I think they took too much time. You're going to be in a big swag battle next week. Should be a good one. That's a rematch of the championship game in Birmingham a year ago. I'm going to flick the switch in Greensboro. He said, let there be light. The light's are coming on at a and I'm going to be the flick. the lights on the first night game against Eli. That's going to be big, too. That's great. Yeah. Nobody knows I'm doing that yet. I just kind of announced it right now. So hopefully Dr. Scandrick will let me, let me do I'm, that. Go I'm Hayes. sure Bill Hayes got <laughs> something on your answer machine right now. And it's something like when donkeys fly. That's <laughs> right. I'm flicking the switch. I'm turning it on next week. <laughs> no, I'll be the one to turn the lights off. I'll probably clean up the stadium. Right. Probably. Well, it's a five-yard step off for delay of game. And again, cash and a fourth down and ten now. Well, this will be something air meal somewhere. Wide receivers, two on each side. Like a covey of quail, here they go. They slant it in. And it's caught. Is it enough for the first down? They get it into Omar Harris. 
Harris out of Charlotte, North Carolina. I believe that's enough for the first down. Had to get to the 24, and I think he's at the 22 or 23. First down, Hampton. So again, Cash, nice little slant move here by the young man out of Charlotte as Harris turns it in for a first down. Again, I like the poise of, of Cash. He was 10 of 16 last week in the win against Howard up at the Meadowlands tonight, 11 of 17, 225 yards, just putting the ball exactly where it needs to be. Ten and a half left to go in the game. Holy, he may have a touchdown. He does. Stumble, bubbles to the line of scrimmage, keeps that great. Now that's a score. This is some kind of football runner here. Montrell Coley scores his third touchdown of the night, and he did it his way. You put this in the archives now and watch this. There's a first thing. He keeps his balance, changes hands, protects the football, gives a zig and a zag, and nobody lays a hand on him. They wouldn't have got him in flag for that time. That was a vintage run by Montrell Coley. So as Coley finishes off, another drive. The extra point by Pavlik is up, and it is good. So Hampton with 10, 28 left to go on their home field at Armstrong Stadium. Get one of the truly great winners in college football, headed for the Hula Bowl, and a touchdown at a 40-6 lead. Well, the Hampton Band has had themselves quite a night tonight. They play after every score, so you know they've been busy. They're tired. <laughs> a 40 to 6 game. Kelly will feel the kickoff by Bolden. Oh, what a stick he got. Oh, my. Over the 20 to the 23 yard line. And I tell you what, the stick put on him by Isaac Hilton, a freshman out of Charleston, South Carolina, was devastating. You return the ball, you think you're getting up the field, you make the little zig, they said, hey, Coley made the zig, and then boom, somebody meets you, takes your first hit of the season, that's big. First and 10 for Winston-Salem. Again, the freshman quarterback, Rodney Milburn, replacing injured Torrey Woodbury. Would be injured with a possible pull hamstring and then decked by Scott on a possible head injury. As he went down hard, they give it off to Newkirk. And Newkirk trying to move the pile ahead and does for about four yards. At this point in the game, you want repetitions. You want to give a chance to get uh, Milburn, give him a chance to, to run the plays. Get the offense. It may be that he has to be the starting quarterback next week. Get these guys used to him. Try to put some numbers up on the board and come back and learn from this experience and be a better football team. By the way, our thanks to Adrian Ferguson of Winston-Salem and Patricia Harvey of Hampton University for their great help in preparing us for the football game. We've already sung the accolades as we have a player down now and struggling to try to get off the field as Harry Cornell, the defensive right end, took a pretty good shot, but he has to come off the field. I says for one play, and I went back in. But again, both coaches, Joe Taylor of Hampton and certainly Kermit Blunt of Winston-Salem, we ask for a lot sometimes. Uh, they're very valuable time. They're always very gracious to us, and we do appreciate it very much. Second down, five yards to go. Milburn with a low back behind him. They'll move it out to the 30-yard line. That'll be about all. Offense for Winston-Salem has been somewhat stagnant, certainly tonight. Averaging 231 yards, got 74 today. Averaging 400 yards, they've got 208. One of the top scoring teams in all of Division II football, almost 40 a game, six points. And again, you look at that rushing stat, 231 yards and only 74 for tonight. Stop on the last play, Nate, by Corey Case in the... White linebackers had quite a night. Milburn with a late pitch to Newkirk. Newkirk's going to go into the film room and say, let me tell you something, Mr. Milburn. He said, if you'll make a fake to the inside and then make the pitch, I won't have quite so many people out here on top of me. <laughs> They're coming after me. That's because, right. you know, can you make it easy? Can you help a brother out? <laughs> Hampton closed on that one as they have all night long, doing a great job on the corners. And this just comes with working on your offense. You should have picked the ball sooner, as you said. Holds it a little late, and it's too late. You know, Scott, Dawson, Carnell, you name them, they're making the plays for him tonight. Corey Kaysen on top of him again as here comes Dinkins to kick it away again. 
five kicks. You see the average well down. One being blocked. Another one he got off, but only went for about yards. Boobs one out of him. Back is Bennett to it at the 35. Oh, big hit put on him. He tries to take it up the middle, and that time Jay Moody, the senior out of Stratford, Virginia, number 53, just nailed him. So as Hampton Road takes over the ball with under eight minutes to go in the game, they command the game of their home field, 40 to 6. Back after this timeout. By the way, Hampton came into this new decade looking to feed what they did in the 90s. They were the third winning esteem in black college football between FAMU, 80, North Carolina, 82, 78. They got 70, excuse me, 79 for A&T, 78 wins for Hampton in the 90s. And Coach Taylor really has done a great job with this club. And off to Hales, the tailback. That's a first down and more. Block will stop with under a minute to go. Once again, we'll be following our game tonight, uh, the final play-by-play. -play. We'll give you the play of the game. We'll talk about our final comments tonight. Of course, Hampton is put together a game plan. Winston-Salem came here with high hopes. They were dashed early with that 26 to nothing lead at halftime by Hampton. A big fumble early on by Woodbury kind of dashed their hopes, their first possession of the game. Then they had to punt it away about six straight possessions without getting anything going. <coughs> Again, and it's so it's so odd, you know, when you talk to coaches on Thursday and Friday, and we do all our meetings, and you talk about keys, and sometimes say, well, keys, if not, it's so very accurate. You know, Kermit Blunt said, we've got to avoid big plays. First down, they think, fumble, one play, touchdown, yep. and they were uphill the rest of the ball game. You know? Nine seconds left to go. Final play of the game is Fraser. Takes plenty of time. This will be the last play. He's going to take a knee, and that'll do it. The Hampton Pirates here on Take a Kid Out to the Ball Game Night have brought their kids home with a victory tonight. Kermit Blunt knows that there will be another night for his Division II. Hands of Winston Salem. And their winning 2 0 record drops down to 2 1. Backing that of Hampton that lost their opening game to the Hampshire. Won against Howard at Giant State last week. And that's up for the victory tonight in a big one. 40 6 is Joe Taylor. Along with Kermit Blunt and the assistant coaches for Winston Salem Exchanges. There, congratulatory handshakes out at midfield. So, Hampton University will win tonight here at Armstrong Stadium. Stand up, I'll be back. We'll have our game and our final comments as we pause for this time out along the network. Kids and choosing not to eat lunch or to eat lunch, we report you decide. I'm looking forward to that because I think we're going to disagree. Then they may look pretty harmless, but the. And here's Brittany Rancy, the final performance of the last Pac-10 Gymnastics Championships Colorado and Utah joined next year. Brittany Rancy, a freshman, will finish it. Woo! Oregon State just needs a clean performance, and they are Pac-10 champions for the first time in 15 years. Open with a huge double layout there. You got a shot of Tanya right before that. This team started nothing worse than being a coach on the stand by hoping your athletes can keep it together. This is what you work for all season long. All those hours in the gym, all that planning, all those lineup shuffles. And all.